Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. Mortal Kombat! Fuck yeah. It has begun! <laughs> oh, we're fucking doing it. We're doing it. We're testing our might. And all I gotta say is, us humans are so unpredictable. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> what you're about to face is vastly more important than your ego, your enemy, or your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> And this is <laughs> the Silver Linings playlist. And it, you know what? It, it really has begun. I'm Nathan. <laughs> I'm Dustin. We're a podcast that tries to find the silver linings in some cinema's fucking raddest techno filled endings. <laughs> Cliffhangers. Raddest yes. techno filled cliffhangers. And may I say, this episode feels very full circle mm -hmm. because uh, we talked about this very film on my very first episode. Did we? In Crank? No, on The Happening. Oh, that's right. Uh, that's because right. Because yeah. that movie has the same ending as this one, essentially. Oh, that's right. That's right. We talked about how Shao Kahn maybe even shows up there in, in France. He does. At the, <laughs> at the end of The Happening. You're right. Yeah, the trees start uh, releasing killer pollen mm -hmm. and Mark Wahlberg says, I don't think so. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I feel like this is the best time to talk about this movie because mm. I think if I'm doing the math right, this is our first episode of Black History Month. Right. And God damn it, we got to pay respects to legendary combat fighter, martial arts expert, Art, Art Lee. We got to do it. Everyone's favorite. <laughs> character yeah a man that truly needs no introduction as the movie shows us <laughs> none whatsoever <laughs> like it, it truly does not matter that he exists <laughs> until it is revealed that he's everyone's best friend absolutely yeah and uh you know speaking of characters yeah we have a guest joining us because mally couldn't be here right. uh, last time i saw him he was getting his soul sucked <laughs> that's what i heard by a uh, a sorcerer from another dimension so another dimension another dimension i think outworld isn't that technically another dimension yeah it is yeah i was just doing the beastie boys thing oh that's right <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little slow. It's okay. So, like most great video games, this character's locked. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we got to unlock him. Sure. So, let me go ahead and do a little introduction here. You got your game shark? <laughs> I'm putting in the cheat code. <laughs> All right, you've met this guest on plenty of episodes before. In fact, seven previous appearances of this podcast. Wow. And some ways called them a Michael Myers expert. Yeah. But I like to call them... After being locked away <laughs> in Outworld, <laughs> consisting of nothing but horrible Halloween sequels, yeah, it's JT. Yeah! <laughs> I'm here. Can I tell y'all something? Yeah. <laughs> Every time JT's on the show, Dustin dresses it up in some kind of pageantry behind the scenes. He's always like, Nathan, I got a guest you'll never see coming. He's waiting in the wings. And I'm always just like, it's motherfucking JT. He <laughs> only asked me three days ago. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not doing anything yet. Sure. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I, you're one of our treasured guests, mm -hmm. one of our most favorite people on the planet. But just once, I want him to be like, no, Carl Urban is here to talk about playing Johnny Cage. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my God. Oh my god. Okay, so a quick question, because this might be somewhat of a segue, but okay. Michael Myers, mm. ever an unlockable character in No, not yet. Or is no. he the only one? He's been in Dead by Daylight, but right. he's not been in yet. What a shame. There is a fighting game, though. Oh, yeah. That's a bunch of, it's all horror movies. What's that called? Terror Drone? Terror Drone. Is it licensed? It is not. Okay. <laughs> Old shitty game, but yeah. it seems so fun. Incredible. But you can get it for the Steam Deck, and if you've ever wanted to see Herbert West fight Pinhead, <laughs> <laughs> which I do every day of my life, then uh, you're all set. <laughs> uh, okay. We're all here. We've gathered here today yeah, yeah. to uh, submit ourselves to the tournament of talking about... <laughs> The OG from 1995. Yes. From director Paul Anderson. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know who that is. I've never heard that name before in my life. He followed this up with Magnolia. <laughs> he did. And then, weirdly enough, Resident <laughs> Evil right after. Yeah. So, just 
toss him back and forth. I wish they were the same person. Should we make them fight? Yes. For the name Paul Anderson? Should we put Paul W.S. and Paul T. Anderson like in a ring together? Yeah. Because as the movie's credits rolled on this and it said directed by Paul Anderson, I was like, oh, buddy, you're not going to be able to use that name for much longer I know. when this movie gets released. The W.S. started with Event Horizon, didn't it? Mm-hmm. I think you might be right. Yeah. Future potential episode, by the way, Event Horizon. Yeah. Okay. Before we really get, because I know we're all a champion at the bit, because this is an all-timer for (laughs) young Dustin from Shore, young JT, and young Nathan. Oh, yeah. But I did a lot of research for this movie. Wow. Okay. It doesn't warrant it. doesn't need to happen. But can I tell you my favorite thing I came across? And Nathan, I think you of all people appreciate this as someone in journalism, (laughs) you know, in writing and things like that. Mm -hmm. I came across an article, November 26th of 2018, which I... I think may have been Thanksgiving. Okay. On the website Decider, Uh the headline caught my eye and raised some eyebrows and I I had to read it regardless. And I want to share this with you guys. Okay. The article title is, Is A Metaphor for Scientology? Whoa. (laughs) An Examination (laughs) by Brett White. Man, as someone who like a huge portion of my job (laughs) is designing headlines around SEO, Uh that fucking rules. Mm -hmm. That rips. (laughs) I'm not going to read this whole thing. But you'll get the told of it very quickly. I just want to read some excerpts of this to you guys. So, there are exactly two distinct things that can happen in your brain after watching the 1995 martial arts video game masterpiece. Right in the thick of binging all two seasons of Leia Remini, Scientology, and the Aftermath on Hulu. Wow. Maybe nothing happens because you'd be hard-pressed to find two things further apart on the content spectrum. Or maybe the other option happens and all (laughs) the right synapses fire and you finally see... For what it truly is a metaphor for the dangers posed by Scientology, a metaphor <laughs> with a whole lot of spin kicks set to otherworldly sounds of 90s industrial techno. Now, <laughs> my god, <laughs> well, wait, wait, it gets better. Oh, good, you might come around to my way of thinking, especially now that you know what to look for. Mm-hmm. You won't even have to watch that much. Of- it's all laid out in the opening scene. Now, do you guys remember the opening scene of the dream sequence, right? Yeah, exactly. Someone screams. Kicking off the greatest movie song in history as the video game's <laughs> logo is forged in fire. That logo? A dragon. What do Thetans look like? Googling what do Thetans look like yielded no satisfactory conclusion, so they don't look like dragons. <laughs> The opening scene takes place in a distant, nightmarish dreamscape. Scientology's massive HQ is in Florida, so there's a parallel. <laughs> the enigmatic ruler of Outworld, Shang Tsung, does battles with a child in order to defeat him and add another soul to his collection. It's not a child. I know. Let's He's break down the scenario. <laughs> Using the a Scientology allegory glasses I just built from scratch. Mm. Enigmatic leader, Shang Tsung could be a stand-in for Scientology's charismatic founder, L. Ron Hubbard. Mm. True. Or even current controversial leader, David Miskovich yeah. fighting a child? While there's no proof that Hubbard or Miskovich ever fought a child, Hubbard <laughs> did kidnap his daughter Alexis in 1951 mm-hmm. and lied to her mother that he'd cut the girl up into pieces and dumped her into the river. That sounds like a real-life supervillain to me. <laughs> Good God. So I don't know much about Scientology. <laughs> they did it to this guy, so don't worry about them. But it sounds like it's fucking red. It sounds like Dustin's painting a target on our backs with this episode. <laughs> it sounds like somebody had a deadline and they needed an article due, so they're like, oh, I don't fucking know. Let's, let's put these apples and oranges together. <laughs> you know, I don't mean to like trash this writer, but it is interesting <laughs> that most of the the allegory is I don't know. Fuck it. They're kind of similar because <laughs> I decided. That's it. That's what I'm saying. Somebody had a deadline due. I guess it is from Decider. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, write about two things that do not go together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're you're drunk out at the bar with your editor, uh-huh. and you're just like you're like, hey man, I bet I could write an article about. <laughs> Scientology. I think $5. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to finish this whole article, but there are a few more excerpts from it I want to read. Okay. The rest of the movie plays as an infiltration mission as Kang teams up with the government, uh, Sonya Blade, <laughs> in order to take down Soong from within. That means traveling all the way to Outworld and getting right in the thick of it. Mm-hmm. Come on, doesn't that sound like Operation Snow White, the case in the late 70s oh, wow. that necessitated the government's involvement and intervention in all things Scientology? <laughs> Again, a Google search for, are there any FBI agents named Raided comes up with nothing but that doesn't <laughs> dissuade me <laughs> and then this is the last little bit i'm gonna read from this article okay. it, it's such a fun read but <clears throat> this is his conclusion yeah i gotta check this out is a very thickly veiled metaphor for all the accusations made against scientology over the last 40 years i admit probably not great <laughs> but much like you can't google image search a thetan you can also can't prove that it's not i love that all i know for sure is writing this will definitely cause someone at scientology to send a defensive email to my editor and probably make them skim through the 
wiki page. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Bravo to, to, to Brett White. Yes, yeah, this man got paid to write a shit post, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, that was the dude's goal. He's like, I just want the Scientology people to give a chance. That's so funny. It really, like, I my eyebrows went way up when I read this headline. I was like, this is either going to be a disaster or it's going to be amazing. <laughs> well, I did not do that much research, so I hope... <laughs> That'll be okay. I really respect that. I wrote an article last week uh, drawing parallels between Elden Ring and uh, Taylor Swift lyrics. So, like, I get it. <laughs> yeah. I get that. I, I understand this man's game. Incredible. So, I guess we should, if this is your first episode, you must be very confused. Let me kind of just briefly break down what we're doing here. So, let's test your might. Let's test your might and test your patience, honestly. We haven't <laughs> really even talked about the movie yet. Our show, we look at movies that don't end in nice little neatly wrapped bows on the ending. Things mm-hmm. that have cliffhangers or bummer endings or things like that. And this movie, while you may think, well, hey guys, hold on. The Earth Realm won. They they beat the tournament. Mm-hmm. They stopped Shang Tsung. Everything's great. No, no, my friend. Because if you remember, if you throw your mind back all the way to 1995. You forgot about the Emperor. You forgot about Scooby-Doo himself, Frank Welker, <laughs> yes! showing up at the very yes! end <laughs> and telling you that they've come for their souls. Mm-hmm. And then they're ready to fight. Cut to credit. So we're, we're on a cliffhanger here. I gotta say, as a kid, I feel like this was the first time I was ever, I mean, outside of maybe Empire Strikes Back, being cognizant of watching a movie with a cliffhanger in mm-hmm. it. At like seven or eight years old, I was like, damn, that's rock and roll. You know what? <laughs> Paul W.S. Anderson is not a great director, but man... If he wants to do a cliffhanger ending, he can fucking do it. Because oh Resident God. Evil. The ending of Resident Evil. Holy yeah. Holy shit. But yeah, no, this movie was a staple in my household as a child. Like uh-huh. this one and the other great 90s New Line Cinema movie, TMNT 2, Secret of the Ooze. Hell yes, brother. Heavy rotation. The VHSs were worn out by the end of their runs. Like it was nonstop for me. I don't know if there was a sale on New Line Media, but like <laughs> when I was a child, my first DVD. I owned were this uh-huh. and Ninja Turtles 1 mm. and I, I watched those on constant rotation. I, yeah. had, I had Secret of the Ooze on VHS but mm-hmm. like once I had a DVD player I was like this is the fucking future. This is the future! <laughs> JT what was your household like with this movie? So I remember and I couldn't tell you the name of what the actual cartoon show was but there was a cartoon oh, defenders yeah. of the realm yeah. okay yeah so my parents who knew about the games and how violent they were they still let us play them because uh-huh. it was 16 bit yeah. they were like whatever <laughs> but when the movie came out and we really wanted it they're like no hold on now here's a nice cartoon <laughs> right it's like we got <laughs> At home here. <laughs> but it, in the beginning of that VHS was a trailer yeah. to the actual movie. Mm-hmm. That's how they get you. And when we finally got it, because it was rated PG-13, parents didn't know that. I was going to say, this movie, your parents did not need to worry whatsoever. There's yeah. not an ounce of blood in this movie. <laughs> yeah. And then we got it, and of course, we we wore it out. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. In terms of violence, it's like a step up from the Power Rangers. Yeah, basically. Is, yeah. <laughs> there's not much happening here. There's some skulls here and there, and that's about it. Uh-huh. I don't know. Scorpion bleeds lava, but yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> that, bleed lava. that shit looks delicious. <laughs> As a kid, I was like, I want to eat that blood. <laughs> that too. blood looks fucking great. That shit looks delicious. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, I want to do two things here. I want to give you some backstory about the movie, but then after that, I have a special clip I have pulled for you guys mm-hmm. that, Nathan, you may have seen, but JT, I know you definitely haven't seen, and man, you guys are going to love what I got in store for you. But okay. before that, let's do a little preamble here. So as I mentioned, this movie came out in 1995. The director at the time was Paul Anderson, but is now known as Paul W.S. Anderson mm. to differentiate himself from PTA. As though we wouldn't be like, did the guy who made Boogie Nights make this shitty 3D Three Musketeers movie? <laughs> <laughs> Why does he keep casting the other Paul Anderson's wife and everything? <laughs> this is the order that Roger Ebert's website lists the cast. I think you'll be quite surprised. <clears throat> The movie stars Lyndon Ashby. Hell yeah. <laughs> Carrie Hiroyuki Tagawa. Yeah. Robin Shu, Bridget Wilson, Talisa Soto, and Christopher Lambert. Yeah. The budget was $18 million and it grossed $122 million worldwide. A certified fucking hit. Huge hit. And the Rotten Tomato score currently is 47%. <laughs> 
Mm. I want to throw out with Robin Shaw or Robin Shu. I, I always get this the pronunciation mixed up. Yeah. There's a few tie-ins to previous uh, Silver Linings episodes. Oh, he helped with the fight choreography and and combat training for Resident Evil. Right? No shit. Yeah. He also starred in two of the Death Race sequels, which you and Mally talked about on Triangle of Sadness. We wow. did. Yeah, yeah. He also co-starred in Christian Bale's favorite film of all time, Beverly Hills Ninja. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and man, he is gorgeous in this movie. This oh hair, my goodness! Holy shit! He looks amazing. He is the Liu Kang. Yeah. He is definitively Liu Kang. Truly, all he needed to do was to be able to act, I and know. his career would have been like. <laughs> When you imagine Liu Kang, like, it, that's how much of an impact this movie had. Yeah. As a kid, it's like, I picture him. Absolutely. Who's the guy that plays him in the reboot? Because he's also quite good, too. I can't think of his name. But yeah, he's very good. He is the best part of that reboot. Oh, but- I disagree. I think Kato is the best part of that reboot. <laughs> we should also talk about the fact that, speaking of things that, like, influence the games, I mean, uh, after this movie came out, Shang Tsung looks like Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa. And, yeah. Uh, we also have, you know, Kano became... I know. Australian, Australian. Yeah. Because Trevor Goddard does a Cockney accent yeah. in this movie, and Ed Boone and John Tobias were like, he sounds Australian. Yes. <laughs> the Your Soul is Mine. Yeah. 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 That got transported to the games because of him. Totally. There's so much I want to talk about with like performances and legacies of where these characters from the game went on to like in the continuation of the franchise. Mm-hmm. But before we do that, before we watch the trailer, because we're going to revisit this trailer. Hell yeah. I pulled a clip that it's not going to blow your mind what the clip is, but just the results of the clip so let me pull it up real quick for you guys this is siskel and ebert Uh reviewing this movie on their show at the movies Mm. and i think you guys are gonna be quite surprised by what they both have to say about this it's a very quick clip yeah i'm dancing in my seat right now right that's one of the many martial arts sequences in Mortal Kombat. It's the minor prize of being the best video game turned into a movie that I've seen. These are minor awards, but they're important, I'm sure, to the filmmakers. It's also the only halfway decent video game turned into a movie that I've seen. Here's the story. The fate of planet Earth hangs in the balance as a trio of warriors face off against an intergalactic demon and his henchmen. The intergalactic. Bear the Earth Another dimension. defeats this crew. All of this is explained to the mortal combatants the mortal by the combatants. <laughs> Christopher Lambert in a fright wig. Christopher Lambert in a fright wig. <laughs> to enter the realm of Earth, <laughs> the Emperor's demon sorcerer Shang Tsung and his warriors have to win ten straight victories in mortal combat. <laughs> yeah, He's so cringe. <laughs> I love him so much in this movie. Kickboxing is the preferred fighting style, and here's a sample as the Asian good guy goes one on one. The Asian good, good guy. guy. <laughs> it's a character I want to see in the next Chucky movie. <laughs> Andy, I have to fight Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Against an Asian good guy. Your soul is mine. <laughs> Eventually, the bad guy, Shang, takes the lovely Sonya hostage. You're a coward, sorcerer. <laughs> Stand and fight. They're only you showing Raiden clips. <laughs> Mortal Kombat continues. Oh, Veronica Vaughn. i changing the place. I love that this review is just spoiling the later plot of the movie. I know. Uh-huh. The special effects are often sensational. The locations are Asian exotic. The <laughs> character is clearly drawn with appealing types. Only the amount of fighting in the back half of the picture gets in the way, but I'm still giving thumbs up to Mortal Kombat. Thumbs a up from Cisco. Wow. Production. I've never played the video game Mortal Kombat, but after seeing this movie, I'm actually attempted. A lot of fun. You know, I can't uh, really give a thumbs up, although I'm <laughs> right. Should. I'm right in the middle on it. One thing. Weren't you I, surprised by the quality? The quality. You know, the thing that bothered me was it was so dark. I wonder if the if the theater was trying Where? to save money on electricity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, then I didn't see it in that theater because I know the one you're talking about. Yeah. And it looked murky. Well, that's the. It just didn't then look. Blame bright. the theater. Don't punish the film. Okay. Well, I can only view, review the film I saw, but I'll tell you one thing that was coming out. The kids who play this Mortal Kombat game, which you know has been very controversial because of its level of violence, were kind of disappointed that the killings in the movie weren't nearly as sensational oh. as the ones in the game, where people have unbelievably horrible things oh, I'm happen terribly to them. sorry and for those children. Been, <laughs> the, movie was the movie I thought it was fun. You had a better time, admit it, you had a better time than you thought you were going to have in this picture. Yeah, well, I fuck with Cisco on this. had a very bad time, that would be true okay. almost no matter what I thought. Okay. <laughs> 
I can't believe it. I wish it starred the kid from Home Alone 3. I know. That's the one where they finally got it right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love I I I'm so upset that the licensing thing I just know. causes a fucking effect where we cannot watch this shit on on streaming or on DVD. I would own every episode of Cisco and Ebert at the movie. You ever seen the clip of their Free Willy review oh, where it begins yeah. with with Ebert talking about the story of a of a young man uh-huh. and his friend his whale friend and he starts <laughs> smiling immediately because he knows he's about to get burned. Uh-huh. Cisco's just like it sounds like us. <laughs> Man, ah, there was there's no better dynamic duo Truly. reviewing movies than those two. God damn it. Two guys who respected each other but also hated, hated each, other each other so, so desperately. Like, much. oh god, it's the best. And they were in a Godzilla movie together. Oh boy. <laughs> we gotta talk Godzilla 98 at some point. We gotta fucking do it. Should we just make an executive decision to put that on the You might be right. Because we're we're still waiting on something else to come out. Mm-hmm. I think you're gonna get your way. We'll, we'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. Stay tuned. I, I, mm, that that episode is gonna go one of two ways. And either way i'm gonna be excited for so it's totally fine <laughs> jt you said you were you were about to talk about christopher lambert being a fucking mensch <laughs> yeah um in plenty of scenes i mean in my notice he's just he's so cringe in a lot of his line delivery but <laughs> apparently he was a big help yeah to uh paul anderson yeah or ws excuse me no no you're right paul anderson for this movie <laughs> <laughs> he uh paid for the rat party yeah. he was just a nice guy yeah he refused to use a stand-in he's like no i'll go to thailand yeah. i don't have to pay for my flight he flew yeah. out yeah, yeah flew he flew out on his own dime yeah, yeah. well because you know you, you can't hire a stand-in for christopher lambert because there can be only one <laughs> there can be only one i i gotta tell you though i'm so glad you brought up his line rating jt because i pulled one other clip <laughs> that i've never noticed until this watch but i could not help christopher lambert's got a specific way of speaking obviously yeah but i think it's important to note he is from america like I don't know why he has this affectation, but he's, he's French. French. But he grew up here. No, he didn't. His really? first American film, he he like yeah, he had to he learned his lines phonetically. Like, I read something totally different then. Oh yeah, no, he was still learning English while he was shooting Highlander. That's insane. I read something totally different. I read that he like was born in Switzerland but grew up here. You got to stop going on those QAnon message boards. <laughs> <laughs> Well, either way, I do love the way he pronounces the word America, because I never noticed it until this watch. But here we go. You fear your own destiny. You already fled it once when you went to America. (laughs) America. America. He sounds like a Call of Duty villain. (laughs) America. I love it. Remember, no Russians. Whoa. Hang on. Mm. Okay. He was, you're right. He was born in America, raised uh, in Switzerland. Well, I got that backwards, but okay. I, a little bit of vindication there. No, 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 for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> That's so great. I'm glad both of you were fucking wrong. <laughs> well, I was half wrong. Uh, Lambert's debut in acting was in a school play at age 12. Imagine that. Uh, can we get that on VHS? I want to see that. It's me, Harold Hill, the music man. <laughs> Man, I, I have I have a love hate relationship with him in this movie. Oh, uh, mostly love, but there's some there's some stuff we got to talk about. I feel like nostalgia gets in the way of it though. Yes, yeah. totally. Yep. We have our blinders on. Yeah, we're also <laughs> in 2024 looking at this 1995 movie. There's some problems. Yeah. I mean, it's fully fucking insane that he's playing the Japanese god of thunder. <laughs> yeah, and that he's <laughs> that even Luke Kang is curious. Like he's all like. You're no god of thunder, are you kidding? <laughs> Even beyond that, the original choice for the role was Sean Connery. Yep. Ooh. Yep. We almost had a different Highlander in the movie. Yeah. Well, I think this movie, and I even have it in my notes, like, we can just go ahead and say, like, or we'll keep saying it's it. It's perfect. <laughs> the CGI and stuff is just awful. awful. Yeah. But we can't just keep saying it, but this movie is so good. We Again, we put our blinders on and you're like, well, it's not. No, no, it's bad. <laughs> It's bad. You don't like that part where Shang Tsung puts up his hands on the boat and Laser Floyd starts playing? <laughs> no. If we're going to talk about anything with bad CGI, it's got to be Reptile is the worst. Yes. Reptile is the worst thing I've ever seen. It's the worst. But like, I'm sitting there watching it and I was all like, oh, this is so bad. Yeah. And then the Sub-Zero scene came up. I was like, well, yeah. I mean, it's not You're awful. You're for the Reptile scenes again. <laughs> we get to see Sub-Zero charge up a Kamehameha. <laughs> For 20 minutes in a fight, yeah. But also, I feel like Reptile's design of this movie is a foreshadow of things to come, yeah. because I don't know if we can even do Annihilation on this show, because mm-hmm. it is unwatchable. Yeah. Like, it really is. I mean, this movie is no beacon of quality, but has there ever been such a dip from an original movie? Drop. Such a steep fucking drop. According to the director of Annihilation, like, they didn't finish the effects oh, before they think? put it out. He's like, <laughs> they, they just literally... Oh, well, I know, but he's like... He's like, literally, they just decided to move up the release date and said, fuck it. Oh, 
It's like when they like when the Walking Dead season one came out and they're like, Frank Darabont, you did a great job. This thing's a fucking hit. Yeah. Do twice as many episodes with half the budget for season two. And he's like, fucking what? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what we're dealing with with Annihilation. Apparently, uh, Paul Anderson mentioned he'll never leave another franchise that he started again, which is why Resident Evil has six movies. He didn't direct all of the Resident Evil movies, did he? He but was he a part of it. all of them. That's, he was like hands on. For- he was a part of it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Hey, that guy's just got to get away from the video game stuff. Did anyone see Monster Hunter? Because I did not. No. I didn't. Yeah, I couldn't be bothered. I I only powered through those Resident Evil movies just because of how much of a hate watch they were. But totally. I was like, I can't do another one with Monster Hunter. I can't start another franchise here. I kind of like that third one. The the, the absurdly po- oh, apocalyptic extinction? one. Yeah. yeah. Which is <laughs> directed by the director of Highlander. <laughs> yeah. They're not good movies, but they're they're fun to an extent. Nathan's only seen Highlander movies and this. <laughs> <laughs> Get real Highlander vibes from this. <laughs> <laughs> let's revisit the trailer chaps because i i want to rewatch this and and get back into the feel of it so here we go oh this trailer was so good i, sh- I showed this trailer to ashley last night and she said that looks like nonsense <laughs> oh has she never seen this no oh, and boy. i guess she won't <laughs> New line, the house that Mortal Kombat built. Of us, there burns the fury of a warrior. In every generation, a few are chosen to prove it. One of you three will decide the outcome of the tournament. Which dangers will travel to the mystical realm of our You know, this is like if Canon had a little bit higher of a budget. Yes, yes. Like the way this trailer's presenting it. No, I kept thinking this whole movie, like, this is very showdown in Little Tokyo, uh-huh. like the, those kind of vibes. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Hell yeah, it has. Oh, fuck yeah! <laughs> Dude, this song. And I love that this song was recorded before the movie. Like, I know. This early. It was two months before the movie. So nuts. What if this was a Bloodsport sequel? I, I'd be in. I did write down Kumite at some point in my fucking notes. Kumite. Kumite. I don't need to run. Oh, this is the way you do it. This is how you introduce these characters. Yeah. First techno album to go platinum, I think. I know. Boy, that's. I want to rewatch the movie right now. I know. <laughs> Can we hang up the phone and go get this, go watch the movie? Again? No. I. What's so fun about that trailer is it really sells the idea that every single one of Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa's line deliveries is a yippee kaye motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Dude goes into his audition, uh, stands on a chair wearing a costume, and they're like, "Yeah, this is our guy." It was kind of surprising how many times I wrote down in my notes, like, "God damn it, the, this guy's fucking got it," or yeah. "This lady's fucking got." Like, they embody these characters characters way more than they should in this shitty movie oh, <laughs> like yeah. oh my god he's so fucking good yeah i couldn't believe how good he was as shang soon and we mentioned trevor goddard yeah as as kano is really doing it up bridget wilson literally coming off the set of billy madison yeah because for those who don't know originally we could have had cameron diaz as sonia yeah Blade. right she had already started filming the movie broke her wrist and had to be taken off the shoot and bridget wilson got flown in to star in this movie yeah. so like she's got a sort of vengeful rage that <laughs> i've never seen a woman this angry in a movie before <laughs> i think she's so stiff in this movie really? but I, I i do i do well i think I, I don't think the dialogue does her any favors because I do actually like Bridget Wilson quite a bit. I don't know, man. That Kano fight, I feel... Well, that fight's great. Ugh. Well, she was also learning the choreography yep. during takes, like yeah. between takes. Yeah. So for a rush situation like that, I think she did solid. Oh, totally. I do think in those quieter scenes, she is fairly stiff. I'll give you that. That's what I mean. Yeah. And I think that's why Christopher Lambert stands out so much because he's the only one that doesn't fit. Yeah. You know, like everybody else is 
killing the role, and then you get him showing up. But see, he's killing it by doing his own thing. Yeah. yeah. I think he's so entertaining. He's so camp in this movie. The the bit where he's just like, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Like, it's, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. But this is what I, I, th- I started thinking about it this time, because Raiden throughout this movie, uh, and by the way, they also changed the spelling of his name for some reason in the subtitles. They spelled it R-A-Y-D-E-N. I don't know why. That's, I think, how it was spelled in the original arcade game maybe or oh, okay. i know it was spelled that way in like the comics but yeah since then they've they've fixed the spelling or changed the spelling got it i feel like i can see that spelling in the old school font got it. Okay. From the games Wait. well i just thought about it this time because he kind of just once they get to the island he just kind of comes and goes as he pleases and i'm like what is raiden doing when he's not on screen does yeah. he just go back to his hotel room and put on the tv or hey that's the entire movie dustin <laughs> like people just come and go they fight in the woods yes. it, it, there's no fucking rules i have so many notes about the rules yeah i have i don't know the rules there's no rules well there's one big rule that i feel like kind of overshadows the whole movie that Uh we'll talk about when we get there but new rules new rules let's go back to the the intro because within two seconds of this movie starting before you even see the new line production card this movie is fucking hype this shit goes (laughs) so fucking even today this fucking song by the immortals who makes the theme song it's still a hard as fuck song like all you have to do in any situation whether you're like about to play the movie or not is just shout and people are fucking hyped immediately Mm -hmm. i pressed play on this and immediately started smiling yeah i was like i'm in (laughs) all right all right this movie and the opening credits i mean it's kind of ripping off batman 89 Uh with the the whole logo thing but like i'm i'm still fucking in like i'm i'm in seeing the logo with the flames oh yeah and and the song playing it's it's so good it's so fucking good it was written for the um home release or home console release of of the game of the first game yeah yeah Yeah. the first game and then it went platinum yeah as the movie came out and stuff well and it was originally supposed to have a grunge or metal soundtrack and like every record label turned new line down they're like no video game movies aren't popular they're not gonna do well and then yeah the, this ends up becoming such a smash hit yeah. how many video game movies did we have before this we had Super Mario Brothers for sure mm-hmm. um, Street Fighter was a year before this right and we were gonna get Van Damme as Johnny Cage where right. he turned this down to do Street Fighter mm. and we had I think Double Dragon was the Ooh. year before this as well you might be right you might be so we had a couple for sure nothing really hit nothing was substantial I was curious about that as I was watching I was like what was there at the time and if you look at the first Resident Evil Paul W. and even really that whole franchise. Yeah. Paul W. S. Anderson makes certified video game hits. Right. I don't know how well Monster Hunter did, but I mean, he he taps into that market pretty well. I think that movie came out like during COVID. I think if you're I right. Correctly. Yeah. So it was, it kind of ate shit. So I love how Shang Tsung, a sorcerer from another dimension, Hell and yeah. yet he still just does hand to hand combat. Yeah. <laughs> like that's most people in this movie can do incredible things. And they're like, no, nah, let's just do a couple punches and kickies. Well, I <laughs> think the key here is that, uh, Lou's brother Chen is terrible at fighting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a flawless victory, technically, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, they stretch the. Uh, oh, they stretch we'll the talk about that. What that means? Oh, yeah, we'll talk about that. Shoot, I'll worry. We'll get to that, dude. Oh my god, <laughs> can't just throw that term around all willy nilly. Yeah, I know. So Liu Kang has this honestly incredible, vivid nightmare about something he could not be privy to uh-huh. about his brother dying at the hands of Shang Tsung, and then man, he wakes up in this apartment. Uh-huh. This telegram from his <laughs> grandfather, dude. <laughs> To the point, though. Yep. <laughs> to the point. <laughs> Luke Kang, brother, brother dead, dead return, return home, home, grandfather. grandfather. <laughs> this is the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> Grandpa's letter was to the point, is my notes. Exactly. He was being charged by the letter. It says, Luke Kang, <laughs> brother dead, return home, grandfather. Like, there is no, hey, how you doing? You got some bad news. So good. You know, nothing like that. I don't know what <laughs> rates Western Union had, but <laughs> they must have been through the roof. I mean, as someone who sprinkles all of my emails with no worries, if uh-huh. not. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I, are you in a, a position to learn information that may hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> This is what we were talking about with that with that whole thing about that whole movement. But <laughs> is this maybe? Can I go ahead and say prop cop right here? This, this would be. I would frame this in my house. <laughs> I have so many prop cops. This my is the gosh. most props I've ever written down for a movie. <laughs> oh my god, I have so many. No, I have so many fucking notes. Uh, <laughs> but my my next one is that Sonya just pistol whipping concert Dude. goers trying to jam. Oh yeah, They're just trying to listen to some stabbing Westward. <laughs> Dude, it sounds like edema or like one of those real <laughs> shitty like one hit wonder 
Wonder kind of yeah. like soft hard rock bands yeah. of the early aughts. I'm pretty sure it is Stabbing Westward. You might I, be right. I, Nathan, I, we opened for Edema. Oh did you guys God, really? You're right, we did. <laughs> <laughs> We opened for them in Dothan, Alabama. Yep. Oh my god. The opening act blew out the speakers, so it took two hours before we went on stage. Oh boy. It was an interesting evening. Oh. And they still wanted us to play an hour. It oh was a god. nightmare. It was. That's awful. And also, do you ever think and, and you know, the the, the the subsection of people listening to this podcast who give a shit about edema and are alive <laughs> today, like uh, it's probably very small, but the vid diagram is separate circles. Like <laughs> <laughs> the lead singer of that band is just Jonathan Davis is like brother, right? Oh, or that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I always wondered if they named the band after that the beatboxing part from Freak on a Leash, oh, where he just thought yeah. he was saying "Te Pumna Te Umna Adima," <laughs> <laughs> or he misspelled Adidas and he was like, oh, "Just fuck it, A D." I don't know. <laughs> All day I dream about mom. <laughs> Yo, Corn taught me how to spell. Adidas mm-hmm. as a child. And uh, Jim Carrey taught me how to spell beautiful. Yeah. And I'm Bruce Almighty. That's right. So, yeah, she's straight up just mashing the butt of her shotgun into the faces of civilians in this club. Yeah. With the world's comically largest flashlight. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It goes down the entire gun. She shoots this shotgun at a guy who shoots at her with an Uzi. No one in the club reacts. Not the musicians, not the fans. She blasts him through a wall. This is like the club scene in The Crow. She blasts this guy <laughs> through a wall and uh-huh. grabs him and is just like trying to interrogate him and I'm like you shot him in the chest <laughs> with a shotgun hey he had body armor on did he I don't care that <laughs> oh, man's going to sleep like, if you do that <laughs> doesn't make you invulnerable that shit will knock you on your ass this is also where we start to get tons of expository dialogue like oh, yeah. Kano turning towards the camera and saying Mr. Shang so oh look. yeah isn't that right <laughs> beat Mr. Shanks. <laughs> yeah. This movie almost plays like a like a video game? A comic, but like this just jumps from scene to scene yes. to like move the plot along. They don't care about Why are you here? They right. don't care about character development because we already know the characters. <laughs> they were just like, let's get the shit moving. Well to be fair, they weren't characters. They were <laughs> names and they were like ideas of what they look like. But there there's no characterization in that first. <laughs> Is there? No. Not really. There's yeah. there's like cutscenes that give us like static images and exposition, but there is a not even cutscenes, just like images that yeah. tell us their story. Yeah. There's a scene later on where Shang Tsung looks at Goro and is just like Here's Katana's deal. She's 10,000 years old. Like, we all know all of this, right? Yeah. Like, why are we saying this out loud to each other? Yeah. Oh, that's Goro when he's talking to Kano. He gives his whole backstory. Right. But speaking of Kano, I, I genuinely do think, even though he is chewing the scenery, Trevor Goddard is great in this movie. Oh, I mean, he's great. We do have to say RIP to the man. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to go fully into his story, but right. yeah, he did uh, have an overdose mm-hmm. amidst his divorce. And man, just just read his Wikipedia article. It's, it's disheartening because- yeah. I think he could have had a pretty good, like, maybe not like an A-list career after this movie, but he could have been, like, in some, you know, action movies, like, as, like, not to this extent, but, um fuck i am blanking on his name and he's a legend but the guy from john wick 4 holy shit why am i blanking on his name oh scott atkins yeah no, no that was exactly nope, oh. nope 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 i'm i'm thinking of the blind character oh donnie yen, yeah, oh, donnie why yen. Can I, not, I don't know why i blanked on donnie yen but yes he could have had like something like that you know what i mean that is exactly what i was gonna say you could see trevor goddard becoming like a daniel bernhardt type right yeah. like he pops up in the matrix he yeah. pops up in john wick like yeah absolutely yeah it's a, it's a real shame i i love every scene he's in every line he delivers is so fucking fun I think he has the best shot in the entire movie. Oh, that turn around with the red eye? Yeah. Oh, the red yeah. eye and the sparks yeah. and the chain and stuff, yeah. Oh, they're doing Terminator for sure. Yeah, well, who cares? <laughs> The attention to detail <laughs> in the okay. costumes here, because like, you know, four or five years after this, we have the X-Men running around in just black, you know, leather jackets. Yeah, right. Why, like the fact that we've got, you know, all these palette swapped ninjas running around yeah. and we've got Kano with a big robot eye. I just, I love it. I love that they went full video game. They did. They embraced what they, you know, what the whole atmosphere was. Yeah. I mean, the, most of this movie at the beginning is just character introductions and <laughs> none better than Johnny Cage's intro. It is a <laughs> lot of fun <laughs> yeah. oh god yeah but it's also funny to think like in this world because make no mistake mm-hmm. this cameo of the director was supposed to be steven spielberg yeah. i know isn't that crazy yeah 
He was going to do it, but backed out because of, quote, scheduling conflicts, which I'll let you make of that, what you will. Uh But this intro is so great because in this world, Steven Spielberg is basically directing the equivalent of a Steven Seagal level action movie. Yeah. (laughs) It's so fucking funny. And I- And I'm not saying Steven Spielberg shouldn't do Under Siege 3 now. Right. (laughs) (laughs) But like Lyndon Ashby as Johnny Cage, I I really do think is great. He's great. He's not nearly as cocky as I'd like him to be. Yeah. He's a little stilted at moments, but he is so good in the direction that he's given. Like I think similarly to Sonya, whenever they have to have like their kind of heart to heart moments is where he kind of falters. Yeah. But like when he's playing like boneheaded, like total diva, I think he crushes. Oh, even when he's like serious, when he goes up against Goro and that first little section of the fight he's, oh, he plays it well he plays it straight and i like it mm-hmm. and uh i'm such a sucker for uh we're filming a movie in the movie scene like yes. you hear the bell ring and you hear steven spielberg yell cut way too late by the way uh-huh. and then he's just like could you imagine quitting a movie as an actor nathan on the martini <laughs> shot you're like no I'm, I'm going back to my trailer fuck this i'm gonna get a gun and i'm yeah. gonna kill myself that, that line <laughs> yeah. made me laugh so hard i'm gonna get a gun <laughs> and i'm gonna shoot myself for being in your movie <laughs> <laughs> he makes it personal. And he says, you can't, you'll kill me. I'll be back directing traffic. Uh, what a lot. What a 90s line. Great line. That is such a great moment. I also <laughs> love this character actor who plays Master Boyd. Yeah. The guy who trained Johnny Cage. Who, yes. Uh, so fun. No idea who that guy is. He looks so familiar. I, I looked him up I'm and now up. I can't remember why I recognized him. There he is. Peter Jason. Oh, yes. Peter Jason. Yes. Let me, let me look him up. Oh, yeah. He's in like some John Carpenter stuff, isn't he? Oh, is he? Yeah, I think so. And he was on Deadwood as well. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. There's just something fun about, you know, Johnny is in the tournament for himself, but it's also still to, like, prove himself. It's okay. not so much like... Well, hold on. Hold on. What? <laughs> we have to talk about his whole character motivation. So Everyone thinks he's a fake. Everyone in the press thinks that he's a fake, but... Dude, you're an actor. Right. Of course it's fucking fake. Like Later on, we see him suddenly exhibit supernatural powers. Well, yes, we do. We sure do. <laughs> he but does like a, He does a shadow kick. He was in They Live and Escape from LA. Hell yeah. Damn, hell yeah. But like, no, in this world, he is a real martial artist like uh-huh. with like championships and everything that turn to acting and they're like, oh, he's a fake. And I'm How like, How often has that happened? Yeah, right? like, like one of two things is happening. Like, could you imagine saying, oh, Jackie Chan's a fake? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, Tony Yar. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I don't know. It's one of two things. It's either he is delusional and like not understanding what they mean when they say you're a fake. Right. Or everyone that is writing journalism in this is like the equivalent. Doesn't know how movies work. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, oh, those, I, you know what? I saw that guy in that one movie and then he was in another movie. He didn't really die. <laughs> what a fake. It makes no fucking sense. I want to see Tobey Maguire swing from a building. <laughs> right. If he if he splits on the pavement, you know what? We knew he was a fake the whole fucking time. I mean, Sonya just hops on the boat. Johnny's convinced to go because of his... Wait, wait, wait. A sick-ass boat, though, right? <laughs> a dope boat that uh, can't go anywhere because it has no sails. I still have some more notes, but please keep going. We, we gotta go backwards from this. Okay. Wait, I, make, your, make your point. Yeah, make your point. I do, too. I do, too. Go ahead. It just, it seems to me uh-huh. that, like, everyone needs a sponsor to join <laughs> the fight because Lou is like I'm gonna go with or without your consent and Mm -hmm. I'm like well you you don't have to you can just jump on the boat apparently Uh (laughs) no one's stopping you Uh, yeah so a couple things here Peter Jason who plays Master Boy Johnny's mentor Uh says to him being called a fake in the papers but there's this tournament that comes around it's a once in a generation fight and if you win that you win their respect and that's where I write down oh my god Akumite (laughs) I can't wait to see that Maybe that's why they couldn't also do Van Damme in there. So like, ah, it's too too close. It's too fucking close. It's blood sport. Yeah. Well, I mean, when started early production, the, the original video game, it was supposed to be Bloodsport the game. Right. And once Van Damme rescinded the likeness rights, they were, they made it into their own thing. Boys, we got to talk about Peter Jason. He was in Starsky and Hutch. He was in the Incredible Hulk TV show. Hell this yeah, dude brother. has been... And he's still working today. Good for him, man. He was in 48 Hours. Cagney and Lacey. Streets of Fire. The Karate Kid. Hold on, hold That's on. the duality of man right there. Dustin got really excited about Karate Kid. Hold on, hold on. This guy... Is this guy maybe... Rip Remington Steel. This guy may be one of the best character actors of all time. The Golden Girls. Yeah, he played Blanche. (laughs) (laughs) Played Blanche. (gasps) He's in Prince of Darkness. Oh, right. He's in Red Heat. The Hunt for Red October. This dude. (gasps) Arachnophobia. Guys, hold on. We're going to go through this whole thing. Quantum Leap. (laughs) He was in Batman the Animated Series (gasps) in one episode of that. Holy shit. He's in Roseanne, Married with Children. (gasps) Holy shit. He's in, in the Mouth of Madness. Hell yeah. Oh, my fucking God. 
Oh my god. Dr. Quinn Medicine Man. Wait, he's in a music video with Meatloaf. He's in Village of the Dam. He's in Congo. Murder, she wrote. The Glimmer Man. <laughs> this dude, Dante's Peak. Pinky and the Brain. Holy fucking shit. Okay, we'll, we'll, we're not even in the odds yet. We'll stop. He was in Fallout 2. Huh. He was in Fallout 2. So it was the voice of Goro, by the way. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Kevin Michael Richardson. Kevin Michael Richardson. Yes, he's he's in that uh, too. Batman Beyond the movie. Holy shit! Okay, we got we got to stop. Yeah. We got to stop. We'll be here forever. <laughs> so I gotta throw this out there. Uh-huh. Oh, he was the coach on Batman we Beyond who stop. stole Bane's stop. formula. Anyway, okay, we gotta stop. More. Anyways, go ahead, Nathan. Can I pitch a companion podcast where we watch this motherfucker's filmography <laughs> beat by beat through every role he's done? I'm I'm kind of in. I'm kind of in. We call it petered out. <laughs> So I feel like there's a scene missing here. You talked about Luke Kang being like, oh, I got to go defend our honor and everything. And I'm yeah, like, he just wants to kill Shang Tsung. That's his motive. Well, yeah, that's what, defending honor. He's like, no, nah, I'm gonna kill him. This is the part that I'm confused by. He comes back and says to his grandfather, this whole idea of a simple tournament deciding the fate of the world is bullshit. It's and then the stupid. very next scene, he's all about like, oh, I, I'm going to go. I oh, gotta- yeah, he's in front of the elders. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> one of my favorite lines in the movie. He's like, the man who killed my brother will be there. I'm going to find him. And they're like, and what else? And he goes, oh, yes, I forgot. We're fighting for the fate of the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess I'll do that while I'm there. That almost feels like he forgot his line and that guy was trying to help him out. It's so funny. <laughs> but, like, the tone of that scene doesn't represent him thinking that this tournament's all bullshit. Like, right. it seems like he's like, no, I, I have to go. You're right. But, like, I don't know. I mean, I think the intention is that he's playing off of what they want in order to get into the tournament. But that's why we need a scene. Right. But there's a scene that's missing there between those two. Yeah. It, that's the plan. <sighs> Look, again, I love Robin Shaw. I, I really enjoy whenever he's in a movie. But he's not playing more than one level at a time nope. in this movie. Nope. I think most of the characters aren't like Bridget Wilson is playing. I am deadly focused on killing Kano. Sure. And Robin Shu is like, I'm deadly focused on killing Shang Tsung. Like, and Johnny <laughs> Cage is racist sometimes. Ooh, okay. So I'm going to talk about that. <laughs> wait, wait. Yeah. We were talking about the docs. Yeah. We get introduced to art. Oh, yeah. yeah. Art, of course. Oh, yeah. You're art lead, right? <laughs> yeah. But he picks up the tabloid that was being read in America and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. The tabloid is in complete Chinese. Yep. Except for three words. Yep. Yeah. Johnny Cage fake. fake. So. <laughs> Art not only is a martial artist, uh huh, world renowned, everybody's friend. He is fluent in Chinese. Yeah, yeah. he's fluent in Mandarin or Cantonese, one of the two. Yeah, <laughs> and he's such an incredible martial artist that they named it after him. It, it used to just be called martialist. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, that was a long walk. <laughs> he also looks like a young Keith David, too, which yes, I really yeah. a- appreciated. Going back to the how he, uh, Robin Shu is playing like a one dimension thing, mm-hmm. yeah. where he's just laser focused. Yeah. The comedic humor uh-huh. sprinkled through that he does is just amazing. When My favorite kind of humor is comedic. <laughs> when uh, Johnny Cage tries to pay him to take his luggage. <laughs> Oh, uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> sorry. No, I, I, Nathan's joke got me. <laughs> no, it's, it was a good one. When he tries to pay him to take his luggage, he's just like, sure. And then takes it and drops it. Yeah. yeah. I just love stuff like that. Oh, it's, it's a, a good great joke. gag. Yeah. So here's the thing. I think this could be played one of two different ways. Yes. And I think we had no problem doing casual 90s racism yeah. at this time. But like. He's in China, presumably. Yeah. And he sees an Asian man and is like, you will carry my bags. But here's the thing. The reason this joke works and it's not nearly as offensive as it could be is mm-hmm. because the white guy doesn't come out on top here. True. Like Robin Chu takes and he's like, okay, and he drops his luggage in the water and he even comes back with a pretty good quip was, that, well, thank God I didn't ask him to park the car. Yeah. And like it works. That it's a, a good line. joke. And I think JT's right. Whenever Liu Kang gets to be sarcastic, it always works. Like uh-huh. he is very funny in this movie and I, but yeah, it, I'm always a sucker for this kind of joke. Like mm-hmm. when when Daniel Craig like smashes the car in Casino Royale after he's mistaken for a valet. Yeah. Like I just I'm I'm always a mark for that. Yeah. And uh, I did want to mention uh, Art Lane is played by Kenneth Edwards, who didn't act in anything after this until a TV series of something called The Craft, really? not related to the movie. Oh, that just came out two years ago. Really? And he just just nothing between then and now. As far as I can tell, based on his IMDb, he wanted to end on a high note, I, and know? that's how I feel about it. Oh, he's like an actual martial arts master. Oh I'm shit, really? Him right now, like he teaches he teaches classes and stuff. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of people like that in this movie like the guy that Luke King first fights yeah. is a world renowned like kickboxer if I'm not mistaken right Hakeem Alston I think is his name Master Kenneth Edwards is the chief instructor and founder of Shantung Kung Fu wow hell yes brother well hell yeah that's great one other thing about this doc scene this movie commits several cardinal sins uh-huh. against the 
franchise. And one of the biggest ones is right here because Jax is introduced, but he's only a cameo. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like he's the guy sitting right next to Sonya that sees Kano. And then they recast him in the next movie. Well, we know it's Jax because she has that quip where mm-hmm. she's like, I trust one person on this planet, Jax, and you're talking to her. Uh-huh. And Jax is sitting there like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go get some metal arms. Fuck this. <laughs> yeah, fuck this. <laughs> And then, man, we get on the ship, and I cannot tell you, I still get hyped when Sub Zero's hand grabs that door handle and yeah. opens the door. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah. That bass line is sick as hell, dude. We got to sample that in one of our songs, Nathan. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love how they're in a room of on a ship that's just chains, the hanging chain room. Yeah. It's from the Hellraiser. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's just to like pull in levels of the game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like just trying to reference those so hard that they're just like, it doesn't make sense, but fuck it. It's all also there to remind you hey scorpion doesn't have a chain in his hand this time now it's like this weird snake bird thing it's a demon bird little lizard spear yeah. what the fuck is this don't worry about it okay <laughs> moving on dustin okay i remember gasping as a kid when that thing like worked its way out of his hand yeah. Like, yeah. I, I think it's a fun effect it is. I just there's a couple of things here though but like why why make them partners brainwash them? henchmen i'm right. like one of the biggest i mean i guess it wasn't at the time but like one of the biggest impacts of that franchise is the rivalry between Sub-Zero and Scorpion. Totally. Which the reboot does pretty damn well. I just think it was them just like, we don't need character development. Right. I guess so. We got the characters. That's all you need. We haven't developed anything <laughs> this entire time. We're not going to start now. Well, and, and that reboot, I mean, I would argue the rivalry between them is the only interesting thing only in interesting the 2021 part. movie. Yeah. Only interesting part. Aside from Kano. <laughs> yeah, and Kano's great too. But I do think it sure is nice of Raiden to color coordinate his electricity charges because Scorpion <laughs> gets yeah. an orange one, Sub Zero gets a blue one. It's yeah. pretty nice. Yeah. And then he's just like, anyway, I can't do anything for the rest of the film. <laughs> can't fucking help you. That was all I had in me. <laughs> Everything else I have is a riddle. <laughs> and then he's like, and now follow me. And then teleports <laughs> out. <laughs> like, <laughs> but like, Johnny Cage, Luke Kang, and Sonya are nonplussed at not only see a man shoot ice out of his fingers and break a gun in half, right. or a man with a snake chain come out of his palm, but also a man literally appear as a streak of lightning and then teleport in front of them and away from them. They don't say a fucking word about it. And then Raiden wants to be like, you're not ready. Yeah, well, no, no shit. shit. What the fuck is going on? No, I don't know what's happening. It's like, we have no idea what we're doing here. Oh, no, man, I'd be shitting my pants if I saw any of that stuff. And then Raiden's all like, it has begun. What? Uh-huh. And then it shows <laughs> Shang Tsung, it has begun. <laughs> he says, this has begun. We see a bunch of spooky holograms in the sky and then the scene ends. Yeah. That's it. Okay, so here's something I never thought about Nathan until this watch and I told JT about this off mic okay. but Raiden says here in order for uh, Shang Tsung and the Emperor to take over Earth Round, they have to win 10 10- in a row. Who made that rule? Well, we don't know about that in this movie. They right. explain it in the games a little bit but That's right. they've won 9 out of the last 10 10- do you know what that means? And again, I never thought about this until this time. It's been 180 years. Well, not only that, but that that means Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, and Sonya Blaine aren't Raiden's A team. No. And hell, they aren't even his fucking F team. He is. <laughs> Dude, they're the bottom of the barrel. He's not even getting bench warmers. He's like, it's like a rookie of the year. Like, hey, bring this kid in. I don't know. He can pitch fast. Bring him <laughs> in. <laughs> like, how did they expect to win this if you've put up nine of your best teams of fighters? It might as well be an M for M post on uh, Craigslist. <laughs> I need, I need some casual fighters. <laughs> <laughs> some street fighters, if you will. I need some people off the street. Come fight for me. People on the street. People on the street. Some mortals. <laughs> just any average mortal that can fight in combat. But yeah, I think Christopher Lambert is pretty good. His laugh is so fucking camp. But <laughs> this could have been a lot worse. And in fact, it is a lot worse when you get fucking James Remar in the fucking sequel. Oh, my God. Oh my and God. I love James Remar. But me that's too. such a wild bit of casting. We don't need to talk about it. No, we got to bring him up a little bit, man. He's fucking fucking awful. He's the Bruno of this. <laughs> we don't talk about James Reeb. No, that movie is the Bruno of this. <laughs> Not just him. I love him. Uh, I love when Christopher Lambert's accent slips out, though. Mm-hmm. Like the, the, the one you said earlier, America, but he America. also has the bit where he says to, to Liu Kang, you still concerned only with vain giants. Yes. <laughs> he says adversary in a weird way, too. He adversary. Says adversary, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> dude. And then he, like, 
gets to Sonya and just like whispers in her ear. Oh my god, so he gets real close. Sonya, I'm gonna pull a quote from one of my favorite podcasts that cover this movie. We hate movies, but uh-huh. Steven said it best. He's like, Sonya is a hair away from being uh, sexually assaulted throughout this whole movie. At all times, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Arguably, she is off camera because someone makes her change clothes for the final act. I know. White snakes her hair, yeah. Also, Sonya's entire arc in this movie is everyone agreeing off mic there's no way you can win. Yeah. Like, everyone knows that you can't beat anybody. It was like, you're a charity case to be here. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> we need you for the diversity of, like, <laughs> we're reaching goals here. Right. That's basically what it feels like. But we get to this island. Oh, we're like an hour into this podcast. We even got to... Mortal Kombat! <laughs> yeah, That's but- okay. The movie doesn't get to... Until about 40 minutes in. Well, you know what? For as bad as this movie is, and it's objectively bad, you know what this movie has that that 2021 reboot doesn't have? Sets? A fucking tournament. Oh, <laughs> yes. It has a fucking True. tournament. <laughs> it has an actual... Mm-hmm. Anyways, we get to this island, and so far, I, I kept a, a running tally of here are the fuck ups this movie has made so far. Okay. So first one, Scorpion and Sub Zero being brainwashed and being Shang Tsung's lackey is pretty shitty. Mm-hmm. Jack's only being a cameo. Lord Raining being played by a white guy. Mm-hmm. Steven Spielberg not getting to film his own cameo. Yeah. Reptile is an actual reptile thing that I don't understand. PS1 lizard. A tiny little CGI lizard <laughs> who looks like a cover of a Zoo Books magazine. <laughs> oh, shit. Shit. It's it's a pre viz Zoo Books magazine. Yes. It's like a mid transformation anamorph. <laughs> so far, and for the rest of the movie, zero blood. Yes, you're already you know put off pretty hard by this movie. But we get to this island. I love the physical comedy of Johnny falling straight forward oh, with yeah. suitcases into the water. It's good stuff. Yeah. yeah, no, that's great. But Nathan, I'm sure you'll appreciate this. We get introduced to former Bond girl Talisa Soto. Oh yeah, as Kitana. Yeah, looking incredible. Oh god, yeah. Well, I mean, she was in License to Kill with yep. Carrie Hiroyuki Tagawa. As well yeah yeah so from this point forward i think the locations and set design mm-hmm. is absolutely gorgeous oh yes. it looks great like you have like the the temples even like the little beach yeah combat arena area yeah it's just so cool i think the production design's pretty good honestly this movie at one point ashley looked over while i was watching the fight between goro and johnny and she was like this is like on a fucking set mm-hmm. that is an amazing animatronic like a puppet like oh I, it's two it's two things right. it's a like it's a guy in a suit right. also being controlled by yeah like by uh like ninja turtle style yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. god i want what he has <laughs> I want to live that life. I want someone to <laughs> shove me in a suit and control me. <laughs> Which this, this made me think about it the two on this watch. Which came first mm. canonically? Was it Thanos adopting Gamora or Shao Kahn adopting Katana? Oh man, I don't remember actually. Because like this is ninety five. I think they invented this idea of Katana for this movie, right? Or was right. this in the first game? I think it's in the second game. But Thanos, uh, Thanos has been around since the seventies, but I don't remember when. Okay. I just thought about it. Yeah. There's a lot this movie is pulling from. And I just thought maybe if that was a coincidence or if like they were inspired by that. But mm-hmm. cause yeah, I can't think of too many instances in pop culture where like an emperor character adopts a woman to just be his heir to the throne. Yeah. You know what I mean, reminded me of another conversation I had with Ashley recently. She's like, you're telling me there's a Marvel character called the purple man and it's <laughs> David Tennant, not the guy from infinity war. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we get really the, like the first bits of Carrie Hiroyuki Tagawa being, uh-huh. And just like running game oh my in gosh. this fucking yeah. like movie, like showing off his acting chops, like when he's given the lay of the land and saying like, this is what you're doing here. Yeah. This is who you're going to have to fight. And then like introducing the henchman in Sub-Zero, like he is, he's having a good fucking time in this movie. And they just go in flipping tables and shit. They're yeah. trying to eat. Right. Yeah. They're, they're all there trying to eat. And then he's like, now for a taste of things to come. Yeah. And they just wild, flip man. over all the food they just brought out. Yeah. I know. So that a guy can dance like he's on a character song select screen <laughs> there's a chef back there just watching the tables getting flipped over me like fucking god damn it like, <laughs> i just i worked so hard i worked so <laughs> yeah. hard like for hours on this meal. you hired me to cook all this food do you think reptile gets under his chef's hat like in ratatouille and like <laughs> helps prepare food <laughs> reptatouille reptatouille <laughs> And then we get Sub Zero versus this unknown henchman, uh-huh. or Hydrogen Bomb versus Coughing Baby, which <laughs> yes. was like what I like to call this fight. These insane things keep happening, and every single scene is buttoned by Lyndon Ashby doing just sort of like a sheesh magish kind <laughs> of quip. <laughs> uh, I will hate to see what the bathrooms look like. Did you just watch the guy be turned to 
ice yeah. and then shattered to a thousand pieces and no one says a fucking thing. Kano's more impressed by it. Like, yeah. later on, he's just like, oh, could say he's guts and everything. <laughs> so, what's worse, the Kano eating scene oh. or the Lord of the Rings oh, tomato oh, scene? Man. The Kano scene. No, yeah, because it's just, there's so much grease on his mouth. I'll say the tomato scene just because we get a close-up of that. Yeah. Right. We don't get a close-up of this. He spits out yes. pieces of it. He's, he's like, drinking it's... wine from a spittoon. <laughs> like, and why are all the henchmen so sweaty? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just 90s movie making, man. You got to make the muscles pop. Dude, they were just greasy looking. Yeah, they were. I mean, they're, they're, they're greasy men. And nobody else was like that, though. And then this movie kind of turns into Temple of Doom a little bit, where uh-huh. you've got all these sneaking around above the, the villains discussing their plans and everything. There's that weird bit where they, like, walk through a hallway, and then there's a dissolve to them seeing Goro's shadow. Yeah. It's like, again, it feels like something's missing. Yeah. yeah. Man, Goro looks so good. I still think he holds up. I yeah. mean, it's not, it, which is crazy, because, like, the, apparently the animatronic was, like, a fucking nightmare kept breaking kept and everything breaking. Yeah. yeah but like it looks it looks good man it makes me wonder if that's why like in that particular missing shot if that had something to do with like the jump cut oh maybe to like them just seeing the shadow yeah like he was supposed to walk by them instead yeah but again the comedy of like johnny cage being like hey sonia we're gonna stay back that's really good <laughs> you go see what that is and let us know like it worked and kevin michael richardson doing the voice yeah. man this guy has 600 credits on indb yeah. and if you're not familiar with the name if you're a kid of the 90s or the odds you have definitely heard his voice you've heard him in a thousand things yeah. i mean one of my favorite bits of trivia about him is that he voiced the joker on the batman yep was nominated for an emmy for it and it, i remember mark hamill getting salty about it because he was never nominated oh. for an award for his performance as the joker at least not for an emmy that's crazy yeah. that's <laughs> yeah. genuinely crazy and then, yeah, this is where they kind of go over their plan and Shane Soon's like, oh, I have plans for my beautiful Sonya. I was like, we don't like that. Yeah. Right. I don't like the word. I don't like how you said that. Nope. And then another fuck up here, I think, yeah. is Luke Kang talks about how he's a descendant of Kung Lao. Kung Lao, never shown. Yeah. I feel like that's a fuck up, too. Being mentioned and never explained yeah. either, really. Yeah. I love this whole bit, though, of Johnny being like, no, it's this way. I can smell her perfume. And it just leads them back to the banquet room. <laughs> yeah. Which means he smelled Goro or Kano's perfume. <laughs> <laughs> True. No, the gang gets lost in those weird caves from the mummy. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, no, no, uh, no scarabs. Yeah. And then we get a fight scene of henchmen of just to show, like, these three fights actually fighting yes i think it's just hey we're the main character fight i think that's just all that was we haven't had an actual fight really yet yeah. other than like, not with these guys anyway yeah 37 minutes in i clocked it is when we get our first actual fight scene yeah and it's fun it's the one or the second of third times we got to run it back <laughs> because yeah. that song keeps in and i'm like hell yeah <laughs> yeah seeing sonya clothesline that dude to that song it's good it's so iconic i love it so much i'm gonna be vulnerable for a second Uh oh as a kid i would try to do the staff spin that johnny does at oh the end i'm of sure this oh yeah. god yes i was the original star wars kid <laughs> yeah dude you go outside and you find a good stick hell yeah <laughs> Yes. Fuck yeah, dude. There's two moments of this fight that I it just stands out to being so fucking goofy. Mm-hmm. Number one is that one cutaway shot to Liu Kang doing a cartwheel over a stair ledge. Yes. And I'm like, dude, I could do that. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's no henchman there, and he just like poses for the camera. Yeah. And then Sonya does the clothesline, and then like the camera just holds on her face, just <laughs> staring off into the distance. I'm like, are you? She's she- not even really glaring. No. She's just staring. It's so funny. It's like she broke down. Like she powered down like the animatronic of Gora. <laughs> <laughs> like the windows power down mm-hmm. the sequel is so much worse about that too oh, like you yeah. just have characters do there's one shot in the sequel that i remember that is just showing raiden and another fighter just doing backflips yeah. <laughs> for like a solid minute and a half i remember that yeah right when he uh becomes mortal oh right he just jumps out doing flips <laughs> just hey look what i can do cuts his hair gets that cunty little vest <laughs> yeah you're gonna have to get john for the sequel doesn't i, I know i'm not doing that I do like uh, a slow clap from off screen. I'm yes. always a sucker for that too. And it pans over and Christopher Lambert just sitting there. Being <laughs> fucking weird. <laughs> like just sitting there. And again, a sign of things to come when the henchmen start approaching the gang and he goes, I don't think so. Right. And he has a little lightning coming from his fingertip. And then, <laughs> anyway, now that the first fight's over, we can leave <laughs> this one. Yeah. I have no powers here. We'll just walk away. <laughs> 
And then again, Johnny Cage being like, Baby be glad he stopped us. Yeah. I just, I love it. He's always got to put a button on the scene. It's a good joke. And then we get Hakeem Alston, as I've talked about, the, the guy that fights Luke Kang here. Uh-huh. Man, this little tiger roar they give him yeah. is chef's kiss. It's that is great. such a good little touch. It always stuck with me as a kid. It, like, I remember, like, the playground, like, rumors i was like maybe like he was a character that didn't make it into the game or something yeah 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 yeah, yeah. something i'll say too is I, and i'm going to quote the producer of the movie here lawrence um i can't remember his name but uh, he said you know when you see the fighting in this movie and the stunts you're seeing the actors do the fights oh, and yeah. like the choreography is not great but at least i get to see the actors actually like doing these punches and stuff like that and yeah. it looks like this fight with hakeem here it looks pretty fucking cool yeah yeah well there was an interesting thing about how like paul Paul W. S. Anderson had sorry, Paul Anderson uh, had no watch your tongue. I'm so sorry. He had <laughs> watch your damn mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he had no experience shooting action scenes, yeah. and so he was shooting everything in crazy wide shots yeah. and wearing down the actors until Robin Shaw was like, hey, that's not how that works. Yeah. Man. You got to break it up. Yeah. Well, the fight choreographer was like some kind of like whatever the highest degree black belt. I can't remember. I saw something on it, mm-hmm. but the dude's a legend. But I think it's worth noting that two of the fights in this movie were added in reshoots. Yep. The, the fight against Scorpion yep. and the fight against Reptile. Yep. And those are the best fights in the movie, yeah. and they were choreographed by Robin Shaw. Yeah. <laughs> Boy. Boy, that scorpion fight, my god. Yeah, he had only done like a couple of things before he did as a director. I think yeah. he did one other movie, honestly. Mm-hmm. I'm looking it up just to be sure, but I think he did like a short film called Shopping, I think is what it was called. Yeah. Uh-huh. And crazy to think that he hasn't really done that many movies, honestly. Like, but this is also to JT's point earlier about the structure of the tournament. We cut here to the beach with all of these guys surrounding the actual tournament space. Yeah. And Liu Kang and his opponent are clearly like in the middle. And then Shang says, Liu Kang, you will be first. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, no shit. Like, yeah. isn't that why we're here? <laughs> yeah. Like, I was told to be here. I like the way he says Liu Kang, too, by the way. He goes, Liu Kang. <laughs> and it's not like we were just walking on the beach and stumbled across this ring. Here. Well, you'd be it's, forgiven because that's how a lot of fights in this movie happens. People just kind of walk into it. That's how one of the fights starts later. Yeah. That's how like three of the fights happen. <laughs> yeah. like, there's no announcement. Right. And then we see Shang Tsung take a soul for the first time. Uh-huh. Okay. First, no, wait, 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 wait. I think it's unfair that Shang Tsung is able to perform a fatality on a guy he did not fight. Right. Yeah. That doesn't seem right. It's not fair. <laughs> yeah. They wanted a reason to use fatality and it was that. They got it. They got that right. It's like drinking a, a Capri Sun that someone else opened for you. <laughs> or like a someone's putting together your lego set and you put on the final piece it's like i i built this i did it i think that's how mally actually puts his together <laughs> <laughs> and then we cut right away to uh the sonya and kano fight yeah we're in the tournament montage yeah. portion of the movie man him stepping out of the shadows though with the kiss and the oh. hello baby did you miss me i'm like oh he's so hello, good baby. he's so good at being bad <laughs> I love this fight. I love the realistic version of the leg grab oh. attack. Like, they're still trying to ground it a little bit. Yeah. No, I, I gotta say that is, uh, you know, it's not sexist. You can have a man fighting a woman. That's uh-huh. that's true equality. And the gutter rolls that she puts out when she gets kicked. Yeah. Oh. I felt that. Yeah. I remember as a kid, it's like, I feel bad for her. I mean, it is a little unfair that Kano's got a knife. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the other thing is like the, the fight before this, Liu Kang and his opponent both have bow staffs. Yeah. Kano gets a knife. And then, you know, when we're in the woods, no audience, yep. no announcer, not a cell phone in sight, just uh, two men vibing. <laughs> it's not sanctioned at all. No. no. But uh, I feel like Nathan and I have to say this. Uh, okay. Sonya Blade goes full Xenia on a top. She does. Oh. She sure does. And then, man, she gets a James Bond quip there, too, a little bit there. Yeah. And he's like, oh, give me a break. Give me a break. Okay. Breaks his fucking neck. So good. Mojito. <laughs> <laughs> This movie's not afraid to kill the the big characters, which I do appreciate, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's pretty nice. And yeah, yeah, like you mentioned, this fight between Scorpion and and Johnny Cage was added after test audiences saw the movie. And they're like, hey, man, there's not enough in this movie. So what's wild about it, the original version of this scene is just him running away from the spear. I love the bit about the spear breaking into the the tree. Oh, and the little eye twitch that Scorpion does. Yeah. (laughs) But it ended with Johnny just running at Scorpion, doing that shadow kick, and that took him out. And they were like, yeah, we need more. Yeah. So let's take him to hell. Dude. <laughs> yeah. oh let's my God. take him to hell. It's not enough here. <laughs> right. This shit's so fucking metal. Welcome. That welcome. <laughs> fucking, oh. God damn it, I laughed so fucking hard this time. I like when he does a little <laughs> twist on his catchphrase with the get, get down, down here. here. <laughs> That's not a thing. But as a kid, 
<laughs> that shit got me so hyped. We're just like, welcome. Dude, that welcome is so fucking funny, though. Yeah. It's so fucking funny. Cheesy now. Great as a kid. I also enjoy the, the Slayer-esque uh, drums and guitar that kick in in the sequence. The off-tempo fucking yes. guitar riff there, yeah. Dude, and Johnny Cage's Raptor defense <laughs> gymnastics <laughs> that he does up the scaffolding. He does all that work and is such a feat of strength. And then Scorpion's just, get down here and kicks him down. <laughs> Johnny busts out the gym kata. <laughs> so wild. <laughs> And Scorpion does that backflip and accidentally catches his feet on that railing and hits the ground. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. But Scorpion bleeds lava. Delicious looking lava. It looks so good. First, he, he pulls off his mask. Dude, when he pulls his mask off, I'm like, hell yeah, a fire breathing skull. Yeah. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Dude, it was it was so like evil dead. Yes. Uh-huh. It's army darkness. <laughs> army darkness metal and he just breathes fire and you're just like, hell yeah. Dude, and then he explodes. Yeah. Like, I don't know why he explodes, but he fucking does. That spear and that bladed shield that Johnny uses, it's yeah. fucking awesome, man. And so then, badass. He's allergic to spears. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, you gotta love the friendship, too, there, oh, yeah. to my greatest fan. God. The graph picture. What a, what a nice little bow on that scene. And I assume Johnny just went back and told everyone how the fight went. I assume he went back and, like, guys, I don't know what the fuck happened. I went to hell. I don't know how I got back here. <laughs> I like to imagine that what we just saw was, like, his, like, upsells the story. Yeah. Uh-huh. But really, he just beat him in hand-to-hand combat. He's like, and then we were in hell and he pulled off his mask and there was a skull and then I chopped half of his head off with the shield. Yep. And Sonya's like you're full of shit. And everybody's just like really? Uh-huh. Okay grandpa. Yeah. What does this fight between Katana and Liu Kang mean? Like is it a draw? Liu walks over to an empty beach for a fight with Katana and she's talking in riddles. Shang Tsung says I'm disappointed in you. Yeah. And I'm like well if she lost or if she was disqualified shouldn't he take her soul? That's why I'm confused. Like how does this work in terms of the tournament like is it a draw did they do a rematch wouldn't this scene make more sense if it was just a conversation yeah absolutely the man okay we get the sub-zero fight yeah i fucking love this whole scene but the best part is that wide shot where sub-zero enters the fight Uh it is the coolest fucking thing i've seen in a movie in a while but like it's so great because there's the silent entrance of him just like walking down the steps yeah the poses that they both do at the start of the fight the lighting the composition it is perfect well what it's funny because i was thinking when i was watching and i saw him walking down the stairs and i knew it was coming but i was like shouldn't luke hang kind of like ready up and yeah <laughs> like get down in like the little arena thing i was like why is he standing there and then the pose happened i was like oh that's why because it's fucking baller as shit as well. <laughs> yeah it was to look cool the number of times that someone walks downstairs while like a <laughs> happens in this movie yep it needs to be studied because somehow it hits every single time <laughs> this one i love the silent entrance there's, yeah. there's just like a light little music in the background but man it's great and then uh yeah as you mentioned it's convenient that it takes sub-zero about 17 minutes to make his ice shield right which is just the right amount of time for luke kang to throw water oh yeah. yeah well katana comes in and telepathically tells him I use the element that brings life yep what if he thought it was semen <laughs> the element that brings life and he just starts to jerk it off <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it Raiden that came in there and dropped the buckets of water off? Yes, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Is this cheating on Raiden's part to bring this water bucket and place it right here at the start of this fight? Just in case you get thirsty. <laughs> and again, how did he know they were going to fight? Because this fight is not sanctioned. There's I think no- this one is because Liu Kang does get like brought there by a monk and told where to stand. Uh-huh. I think this one is sanctioned, mm. but I don't know. I had no idea. Raiden is like, this water is the equivalent of a steel chair. <laughs> 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 Putting it in the ring. <laughs> A foreign (laughs) object, if you will. Oh, man. And then when Shang Tsung goes to Goro and he's like, it's time. And then just all oh, these bodies just getting tossed around. That shit's so wild. Oh. You know what's funny is uh, Goro kills all these dudes in a gravel pit, but Art doesn't have to fight him there. No, no. He, gets, he gets a nice little boxing ring. That's it's right. very nice of them. Poor Art. <laughs> Am I right? Art gets the shit beat out of him. What's so funny is, so after Sub-Zero is killed, Shang Tsung goes to Goro and he goes, we've let these humans win enough. And yeah. I was like, then just send Goro out first. first yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first guy. Dude, this is the last you need to take over this whole world. Right. Sing your strongest out. Don't fucking play around. Right. I'm curious if this was Art's first fight. Oh, that <laughs> That's sucks. really funny. He's been waiting a week. <laughs> <laughs> the way this movie is structured, we meet Art at the docks, uh-huh. and then we see him at the dinner with Johnny Cage at the beginning where Sub-Zero kills that random henchman. Uh-huh. And then this is the next time we see him. And now he's everyone's best friend. Everyone's Sonya best weeps friend. for him. Sonya's guttural, no! Nah! <laughs> 
know that she does. I'm like, you've never spoken to him. Only Johnny Cage has spoke to him. You just met. Yeah. Your best friend is Johnny Cage and you treat him like shit. I know, right? I love that bit with Goro catching Art's hands yes. and beating him up, but it it's kind of undercut by seeing Art's vinegar strokes face right before he dies. <laughs> And then, man, Megoro picks him up and says, time to die. I was like, ooh. That was good. Hell yeah. So, <laughs> during that fight, there's a cameo of Ed Boon and John Tobias. They're the hype men? Yeah, they're the Goro? hype men. They're the Goro hype men. <laughs> Hang on. I gotta ask. Uh-oh. Is one of them the guy that looks like Scott Staff? A little like, bit. in the yes. middle of the fight? Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. <laughs> that's great. You can see them in the Johnny Cage fight at the beginning. Yes. Okay. They're the two guys that, like, look at each other and go, yeah, yeah. Fuck Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, that's Nathan and I's bit part. That yes. has to be. We're Goro's hype men. It's kind of amazing that at no point in this movie did someone like lean into the corner of the screen and just go, Toasty! <laughs> yeah, I wanted that somewhere. I don't know where it would be, though. A good place to put it. When Scorpion explodes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we talked about the rules not making a whole lot of sense in this movie, uh-huh. but uh, when Goro kills Art here and Shang Tsung steals his soul, he says, flawless victory, and I'm like, uh, no, no. No. That's not what that means. Art got a couple hits in on Goro. Yeah. He got a couple hits in, but everyone's just like there's no hope and Johnny volunteers to fight Goro yep. like well, how does this work I like, don't he know. has to put in a request to fight Goro Shang Tsung has to approve it and sign it in triplicate like- <laughs> there's another movie where like if you just challenge somebody they have to fight no matter what uh-huh. I'm sure there's plenty of fighting tournament movies like that but we skipped the uh your soul is mine yeah. Fazine yep. goes into his eye yep. oh, yes. <laughs> it didn't work like that before but now it does I, I give it a pass man he's a sorcerer yeah. it looks like the reverse of the shot when uh, uh, Shaq comes out of the lamp and uh, out of the uh, boombox. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think that shot is what they were going to do with if instead of water, Liu Kang just used semen to fight off. <laughs> he sc- shoots it into his eyes. <laughs> the juice is going into his eyes. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> So Johnny, Johnny's in love with Sonya Blade, right? And sure. he tells her <laughs> Well, we didn't know that. He's like, I can't let what happened to Art happen to you, not to you. Yeah. And it's like the least convincing line delivery in the movie. But also Sonya cares now. She yeah. does. And their relationship jumps ten steps in, behind the scenes. It blossoms. Yeah. But there's also, this movie has its own version of the winding camera sound effect from Texas Chainsaw Massacre oh. that it uses during transitions. I don't know if you guys heard it, but it's like a Oh, oh it's yeah. like a sting of some kind. Yeah. They do it a lot here too. Yes. It's like a kind yeah. of sound effect. <laughs> what was that again? <laughs> it's it's a uh, Drew York from Straight from the Path. Yeah. <laughs> 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 But yeah, if Shang Tsung is allowed to pick anyone to fight, yes. regardless if they're the semifinalist of or not, what's the point the of the whole, whole tournament? tournament? Here's essentially what happens is Raiden tells them, look, there's always a way to win. I'm like, great, that really helps. Yep. And then Shang Tsung <laughs> essentially says, I'm paraphrasing here, if you win, I get to challenge the winner or, or anyone, anyone else, else. <laughs> and we can fight wherever. I'm just making this up. <laughs> And then he says the line, Lord Raiden, the rules are quite clear. (laughs) They sure are not. There's no point of the tournament then. Just challenge Sonya Blade at the beginning. Boom, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. You did it. But yeah, Raiden's like, there's always a way to win. And then after Sonya gets taken, (laughs) they're like, can she win? He's like, no. "No." (laughs) Absolutely not. Not this bitch. Dude. She's so not ready. When he says that, can Sonya beat Shang Tsung? And Christopher Lambert goes, no. No. no." Uh, a word that I understand in every language. <laughs> this is like law. Before we get to that, we got to talk about the Johnny Cage and Goro fight. Uh, man, I loved it. I love the nut punch. Yeah. It's so funny. Not only is it great because it's one of Johnny Cage's signature moves from the game, uh-huh. but the way they build up the tension here of this fight with him breaking the sunglasses <laughs> and the yeah. music, and the first thing Johnny does is he just does a split and punches him in the balls. It is <laughs> yep. so... I think the groan Goro is making yes. after getting punched the balls, it's so fucking funny, dude. And and Johnny hurts his wrist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He thought he's got balls of steel. <laughs> I love how much detail went into the Goro animatronic. Where, like his eyes are bulging. Uh-huh. It's, yeah. just, <laughs> it's cartoony somehow. <laughs> and it was just, it was so good. He's like Marv in Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the face in the cell that Goro makes. <laughs> it's like when I go to Five Guys and they tell me my total. I'm like, oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man and then man little five-year-old me watching this movie there's one line of this movie that i would repeat constantly and constantly get in trouble for yes. but that is those were 500 dollars sunglasses asshole yeah great line <laughs> nathan you'd like this in my notes i put goro has nards goro has nards <laughs> <laughs> this movie honestly is pretty good with the callbacks because goro you know it ends up hanging off the side of the cliff and yeah. he says this is where you fall down yeah so good and then Nathan, what do you think is funnier? Goro falling into the clouds or the head of OCP falling out of that building at the end of Robocop? Like, which one? <laughs> who, who did it better? I mean, double the arms, double the comedy, I well, always say. I'm saying. Goro's got the, about the same amount of length, of, like arm span, as that guy did. Have you seen, uh, like, the behind the scenes of that shot? I yeah. have. I have. It's equally as funny. By the way, I don't know if you've ever watched the unrated cut of Robocop, mm-hmm. but it was put out from Shout Factory a couple years ago. The scene where Ed 209 unloads on that dude in the conference room. Oh, it goes on for a full like two no, and a half minutes. It's, no. It is so fucking funny. It goes on forever. God, I wish we could do Robocop on the show. Fuck. I know. I know. God. I think every year y'all should do an April Fool's <laughs> episode. I like this idea. I like this idea. Can I tell y'all, I, I tried to convince Ashley to watch Robocop because it is one of those movies that is so hard to pitch if you don't like really know like, you know, how it works. Yeah. Or, you know, the, the tone of that movie. Yeah. Because when you say the name of the movie, you're like, I know exactly what that movie's going to be. And I'm like, hey, unless you've seen it, you really don't. Which you don't was know what that movie's gonna reaction be. to the screenplay. Yeah. yeah. But... <laughs> To my everlasting shame, the way I tried to sell this movie was, no, 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 it's the director of Showgirls. <laughs> Gets him every time. That would have worked on me, by the way. Uh, a movie that <laughs> fucking rules, and I keep trying to figure out how to put it on the schedule. Right, right. And then, yeah, Shang Tsung steals Sonya. He's like, I'll, I'll get an easy win here, basically fighting her. Raiden says, follow them. If you look hard enough, you'll find a guide. I and, know. You, you know, Katana just shows up and is like, hey, guys. <laughs> But then he says, I have nothing further to teach you, Luke King. I'm like, what the? F- well, you didn't teach him a goddamn thing. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, I forgot because Luke King said something about going to save her. I can't remember exactly what it was. Yeah. But it was at that moment where Raiden's like, I've been waiting for you to say that this whole time. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I have nothing else to teach you. Yeah. Like, you waited for a cop out. I you know. haven't done shit. He might as well have said, like, Raiden, you're a useless piece of shit. And he's like, oh, perfect. <laughs> you're a terrible Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's all I'll say. Ooh, That's a good parallel. Like, you're a piece of shit. Well, there's some other parallels here at the end of Star Wars we'll talk about in oh, a minute. Boy. But they get to Outworld, and then Luke Kang just has, like, Predator vision and sees Reptile there. Right. I love that scene yeah. where he's, like, walking, and Johnny Cage is like, what are you doing? Yeah. That's me looking at my sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I love the announcer letting us know that this guy is, in fact, a reptile. Yeah. He may have the best theme of the whole movie yeah. besides the main one. His song is fucking awesome. Yeah. And maybe the greatest mask of all the ninjas, too. Yeah, he gets thrown into the uh, statue thing. Yeah. yeah. And then it, little vines trap him. That morphs into a ninja. <laughs> to a ninja. Yeah, then that's when we get reptile. Yeah. That was a great introduction. The scene originally ended with him just being tossed into the statue, and that was the end of the scene oh. and then the fight was added in reshoots i mean i guess you could say yeah that he just became one of those statues and that's the end of reptile but right. no the fight's fucking great because reptile was first introduced as like someone to like guard katana right yeah. yeah like he was just there in the movie yeah okay but he's also like the guy playing reptile is vocalizing as he's fighting on like scorpion and sub-zero uh-huh. like it's muffled but it sounds cool it's like michael myers and rob zombies halloween 2 like it's the same <laughs> kind of like just yeah. exacerbated oh, like yeah, yeah it's fucking it's a great fight i think it's the best fight in the movie yeah, like from a technical like martial arts standpoint I no think it's it's really cool the choreography is so clean yeah. it's so fun i think one of them got bruised ribs or something robin from the, did. Yeah. oh yeah robin Shu broke some ribs or something. Yeah, yeah that he choreographed imagine that <laughs> you choreograph a fight and get your ribs broken i love the little snake-like twitch that reptile does yes little moments like that make this fight way better than it has any right to be but why does he turn into bugs <laughs> i could not tell you <laughs> could not tell you like oogie boogie is is reptile i love the silly jump kick the bicycle kick yeah. he does the bicycle kick but it becomes the there's a scene jt will appreciate this the scene from guyver 2 where he just like does that flying kick through the air that goes on forever it's so good <laughs> yeah where he spins like a like <laughs> horizontally oh, yes God. can we do guyver 2 yes okay it has a happy ending but we can <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and let you know uh, so he squishes reptile and katana steps out and says you're finally learning yeah. and i'm like to kick yeah. to kill people apparently <laughs> (laughs) But also, to answer your question, JT, I think the reason he turned into bugs is that statue had a silver shamrock mask in it. Oh. He gets kicked into it, yeah. 
But also, where the fuck is Johnny during this whole fight? Yeah. Why is he not helping? This is not a sanctioned fight. Yeah, no, I love, like, this is just a street thug fight that <laughs> could go south. Is it a street fight? Is that what you're saying? They're yeah. street fighters? <laughs> they're fighting in the street that gets kicked into a temple of some kind. <laughs> so, this is one part of the movie we absolutely do not need, and it's when Katana's walking with Luke Kang and Johnny Cage, and like, look, you're gonna go have to fight Shane soon. You will face three challenges oh, in his sure. fight. I'm like, you don't need this. You do not need this at all. Three Just- vaguely defined <laughs> challenges. And then we spin up this CG tower, yeah. and we see Sonya Blade that's suddenly dressed like Barbarella for some <laughs> reason. Right. And she's got hair from a white snake video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> She looks like that extra in society, Nathan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is also like the 30th time they mentioned the Emperor. Mm-hmm. But has not called him by name. We yeah. saw his hologram on the boat. Yeah. We see a CGI statue cutout face on the tower. Yeah. Uh-huh. Never see the fucking emperor. But someone looked at that tower and it's just like, you know what? I think that's the Night Slasher from Cobra. I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say. But also, that's kind of Star Wars and New Hopey. Like, we talk about the emperor in that movie. We don't see him oh, until sure. the next movie. True. So. But then, yeah, Sonya says, I refuse to fight you. And then she says, my friends will come for me. And I'm like, fucking what? Your friends? You've been here like one day. What are you talking about? And you've negged them the entire time. The whole time. You keep saying, I don't need help. I do things on my own. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I truly don't understand the rules, but it is so funny to me that this whole scene is people standing around and saying, Sonya can't do this, yeah. including Sonya. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So so Luke Kang steps forward and is basically like, I am the protagonist. Yeah, yeah that's what I say. Some then, I mean, both of their fights, when they do fight, like, they have pretty equal skills, I would say. Uh-huh. Like, there's nothing that separates Liu Kang from Sonya in terms of fighting. Like, they don't have any powers at that point or anything. I mean, the closest is fucking Liu Kang defying gravity with that bicycle kick he just did. <laughs> right. But I also love how Shang Tsung was all like, they all revealed themselves. He's like, fine, I challenge you, Johnny Cage. Yeah. And then Liu Kang's like, no, yeah. no, no, I'll fight you. And he's just like, shit, yeah. shit. <laughs> he's just like, fuck. This is my plan, and it's going to shit. Well, I also think there's something to be said about the fact that this big 90s Hollywood movie had two Asian men in the lead roles, and yeah. like, that's the final conflict. That's got to be, you know, something's got to be accounted for something there, you know? Totally. And I do love, I mean, <laughs> Shake Sung kind of gets on his back heels immediately. Yeah. He essentially has a nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he bleeds from his lip, and he goes, you fool. That fight starts, and we got to run it back for a third time, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> You know, I think I'm going to put every time we say Mortal Kombat in this episode, I'm just going to drop that cue. <laughs> I mean, that's up to you, you how long you want to spend editing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we're already like an hour and a half in. We haven't even got to the end of the movie yet. But uh, how funny would it be if this episode's longer than our episode on blue is the warmest color? <laughs> we're going to split into two parts. Like when JT and I did The Shining, the Shining. we're going to have to talk about. Yeah. Uh, this seems like cheating, though. Tagging in other people to fight for you. Yeah. I think this part's a missed opportunity to bring in some... Other characters, like smoke and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Other characters or characters that we've seen die in this movie. Yeah, like, bring back in art. Like a zombified art. Oh, yeah. Make art evil. Yeah. Ooh, that'd be rough. Yeah. <laughs> but that's also 100% video game logic. I'm yes. like, you fight the final boss, and then he brings in other people you gotta fight before you can get back to him. Yeah, you got phase two. Yeah. I love that Katana tells us, oh, he has to face the souls of a thousand dead warriors. Warriors, and then like, like six, six guys jump out of the ground. <laughs> yeah, no, these are six homies, dude. Six guys, and I'm pretty sure at least one or two of them go out with like a kick. <laughs> right. So I remember when I was watching it and it got to the end of the movie, I was like, so those three trials that Katana was mentioning that <laughs> we're not even doing those, right? Oh, no, we do. We technically do. Yeah, because- no, she's listing all the things that during the fight are the three trials. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, okay. So let me just take off that note yeah i I was confused as everybody else well no because she says you'll face your enemy that's the guy she just faced you face yourself which is the easiest one he says one sentence and he goes we all make our own destiny and he's like all right you did that one all right now uh face (laughs) your worst fear face your biggest fear yeah and then luke king's a fucking idiot because he's looking at shang soon with his back to him when he turns into chan yeah and he's like dude that was right in front of you yeah he's like yeah raiden sent me (laughs) yeah and then, man, maybe the funniest line of the movie is when Chad goes, hey, remember when our parents died? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, for- I totally forgot. <laughs> Same song in his head was all like, quick, 
I need to say something that only he would know. <laughs> I gotta find something, yeah. <laughs> hey, remember our parents died? That was weird, right? And then, for some reason, because the spikes start spinning out from the ground below them. <laughs> the aluminum foil, yeah. <laughs> the reason is it's time to be in the pit set from the game. <laughs> Nobody says, like, Johnny, Sonya, or Katana, none of them go, hey, Lube, just be careful, there's a bunch of fucking spikes down here. <laughs> hey, well, no, because they couldn't help with the fight of six different dudes. I guess. Them, so. I guess, but no. It's, it's one of the trials, doesn't he? <sighs> he goes, Shang Tsung killed my brother and he goes, you're mine. And they start fighting again. And then he defeats them. He does like the the little fireball, the power ball thing, which is, dude, I couldn't express to you how hyped little five-year-old me was at seeing oh, that yeah. fireball. Roll forward punch. Yeah. He says flawless victory. And I'm like, he no, does. it fucking isn't. No. no, it isn't. He beat the shit out of you. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention. He also says something like, Shang Tsung's beating the shit out of Luke King. He goes, oh, the chosen one, like right. mocking him. I'm like, we got to stop pretending like that's a thing. That is not a thing yeah. in this movie that Luke King's the chosen one. Well, Luke Kang even tells us I am the chosen one. Yeah, I know. That's what I meant, like, the Star Wars relation. I'm like, you're not the fucking... There's, there's no chosen one in this movie. What right. are you talking about? Yeah, they haven't mentioned any kind of chosen one, really. Yeah. And then, uh, I guess the moral of the story, because he says, you know, I'm not responsible for Chan's death. He chose his own path. I'm like, right. I guess the moral of the story seems to be, fuck your family. They're on their own. Yeah. Whatever they do, fuck them. If they die, they die. Yeah. That ain't my fault. <laughs> and then he beats Shane Soon, all the souls exit his body. I do like the little moment with the real Chan. Yeah. I thought that was a nice little touch. Yeah. And it wasn't cheesy at all. It wasn't mm-hmm. Mufasa like. I like it. Yeah, yeah it I was do too. Good. Because the actor who plays Chan, I think he gets a great performance in this moment. I do too. I do think that we should have saw art. Yeah. Flying in the soul tornado thing absolutely but instead we saw the fighters that he just fought <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was it that should have been where our cameos are we're just one of those souls just rippling up in that fucking field <laughs> and since they're so good friends art could have came up to sonya and johnny and talked to them while he gave him a little dap <laughs> and then like goodbye dude i know shang Tsung didn't suck up his soul or whatever but like what if scorpion skeleton came back and he was like ah water under the bridge we're good <laughs> <laughs> he pulled off his mask to the skull and he's like, oh, I'm just kidding. I do want to talk about one last thing at the end here with the soundtrack because this movie soundtrack is a fucking banger. Not just the techno songs, but like this orbital song that plays here at the end yeah. is still great. Yeah, I agree. It's a really good song. See a bunch of kids running, yeah. celebrating. Everybody's having a good time. Yeah. Ain't nothing bad going to happen today. You humans. Yeah, everybody's coupled up. It's, you know, Sonya and Johnny are hand in hand and Katana, who's 10,000 years old or whatever the fuck, is with, with <laughs> Luke Kang. Presumably Raiden and Luke Kang's grandfather. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Raiden's all like, you did great, son. <laughs> and then this temple burst open. You fucking assholes. Now Raiden wants to fight because he now he poses to fight Shao Kahn. I'm like, dude, you did nothing the whole fucking movie. I know. We don't need you. <laughs> we did it. Well, his powers work on Earth, just not in Outworld. What? <laughs> yeah, the movie, at one point he's like, they've gone to the Outworld where I cannot follow. Yeah. He can't follow, but he can still do powers, yeah. I guess. I don't know. But anyways, they pose, and then we smash cut the credits, kick in the song again. Running back for a fourth time. Hell yeah. And uh, yeah, directed by Paul Anderson. How many of those little kids you think died in the rubble? Oh, <laughs> the number's not zero. I mean, it goes to shit immediately yeah. when Annihilation starts. God. Yeah, what if uh, <laughs> what if Shao Kahn's like, ha, oh, fatality, flawless victory? <laughs> it blew my mind watching this movie again and thinking, like, the screenwriter of the second movie said, yeah, we should definitely kill off Johnny Cage in the first three seconds of this film. Oh my god. In the first few few moments of that movie and they're like let's recast Sonya Blade let's recast Raiden let's recast Shao Kahn right let's get uh was it Brian Thompson is that his name let's get him in here yeah Yeah. and and he doesn't wear his mask through most of the movie I know yeah that movie is unwatchable. It's garbage. God. Bridget Wilson was uh, filming I Know What You Did Last Summer. Hell yeah. yeah. And that's why she can't do it. Good choice. That movie rips. Yeah. Yeah. She's so good in most of her movies at this time. Oh, yeah. And she's great. And she's good in this. I mean, she's a little stilted, but she's doing her best. So good in The Last Action Hero Mm -hmm. also. And she's beautiful. I mean, Veronica Vaughn. Oh, yeah. She's gorgeous. I heard her and Johnny Cage got it all. (laughs) Is that true? (laughs) No, they didn't. Yeah, but you you can imagine what it would be like if they did. All right, fellas, any final thoughts before we get to Prop Cop? I don't know. I think this was a flawless victory. I think our coverage of this movie, flawless. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, let's get over to Prop Cop. Can I go first? Uh, You know what? Sure. But before I do, let me explain to people who may be tuning in for the first time what Prop Cop is. That's where us three here are going to look at all of the props in the movie we just talked about. 
And we're each going to pick one prop from the movie to hypothetically steal to own for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're going to break the rules of the (laughs) tournament and we're going to steal some of these items here. JT, what prop do you want from... I want the shield. Oh, yeah. the serrated shield. Yes. Yeah. I wrote that down as one of my options. Yeah. I'm going to go second and I want Raiden's Jedi robes Hell that yeah. he wears throughout most of this movie. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Good one. What do you want, Nathan? I really love uh, on the during the fight between uh, the quote unquote fight between Liu Kang and Katana. Shang Tsung is sitting under a tent with the logo on it yeah. but it's also like cut into the fabric yeah. so it leaves the shadow of the dragon on the beach i loved that yes yes it rules that's great as a consolation prize i also uh, you know if it gets cold i want shang sung's coat yeah it's so rad that was my very next one on my list hell yeah i thought that leather jacket was so iconic i wrote down as one of my also options is that electrified baton that that guy johnny cage fights in his movie oh, scene yeah uh-huh. i also have the uh, uh, dragon ship the whole <laughs> ship <laughs> <laughs> that's a very mally pick and uh the frozen gun all oh, the frozen gun that gets broken in half yeah, yeah that's good yeah well we've already kind of briefly talked about it but what about bit parts uh-huh. which is where we're going to recast some low level characters in this movie some non-named extras as ourselves mm-hmm. i do want to go out and give a blanket one okay i think the four of us if you include mally should be the guys that johnny cage fights in that movie scene <laughs> sure <laughs> the one i'm actually going to go with and man it was a tough choice between all of these but i think i might want to be the pa who tells johnny cage hey someone that's here to see you on set <laughs> that's a good one and he goes who is he, he goes i don't know he goes you let somebody on set that you don't know who it is i'm like that's a good fucking point <laughs> it better not be a reporter you, know, you, you want, want me to, to find, find out, out? <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good line yeah <laughs> so i think that'd be a good one nathan who do you want to be one of our shadow warriors at <laughs> the end of the movie that shang sung resurrects is played by gerald okamura mm-hmm. who is uh, a an absolute legend of martial arts movies he was in blade he was in Big Trouble in Little China. Hell yeah. Shadow of the Dragon, Samurai Cop. Is he the guy with the little hand thingies? Yes. Okay. He's also the one who goes after Jack Burton with a hatchet yeah. in uh, Big Trouble in Little China. But he, whenever all of the souls are rising up at the end of the movie, he's like vibing the most. Yes, he might he as well is. be in a hammock. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing the wave and he's the only one doing it. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> it's so good. JT, who do you want to be? I guess I'll be the, uh, the guy that leads. <laughs> Liu Kang into the <laughs> Sub-Zero fight. That's really good. That was one of my options. And he just points and then just keeps walking. I love that moment. Yeah, this guy over here, you're going to fight him? <laughs> <laughs> just just stand right there. Stand right here. He'll be there in a second. <laughs> Quit asking so many fucking questions. <laughs> well, fellas, our work is cut out for us. Earth Realm is in trouble of being invaded by the Emperor himself. Mm. So uh, we have to come up with a silver lining for... <laughs> Uh, I'll go ahead and go first. Uh-huh. I'll say Luke Kang got real honest to God closure. Yeah. Like not many times in movies that we cover do people that lose a loved one get to actually talk to those people and make amends, but mm-hmm. he did. And he knows that his brother is in the afterlife waiting for him. Yeah. I thought that was genuinely a great silver lining. Nathan, what do you think? Mine was kind of along those lines. Lou's not blaming himself for his brother's death anymore. Mm. But if I need to go with a something slightly different, Raiden gets to act like this was all part of the plan. <laughs> <laughs> he gets to bullshit his way to the end of this movie. That's right. JT, what about you? Johnny Cage got to re- get revenge for his best friend, Art. Ah! <laughs> his best friend. His best friend. And he's going to live a long... <laughs> Long and happy life. Yeah, that's what I, I've heard. That's something now too. Like that I was like, Johnny Cage is still alive at the end of this movie, which cannot be said about the sequel. Yeah, he's going to live a long, happy life with Sonya. He's going to have no back problems whatsoever. No. <laughs> there, what if there was a shot of like when they're walking away together at the end of the movie? It just cl- does a close up on Johnny Cage's eye, and Art is like screaming in his iris. <laughs> <laughs> or what if like he's walking with Sonya there, and, he, and he's like, ah, oh, you know, I got a little stiff back from all that fighting. Wait, I thought he broke his neck in the next movie. I thought it was his back wasn't it i think it's his neck who could fucking nobody knows because we haven't watched that movie in forever so who could know and i shan't yeah all right so here we start double feature we're running it in we're gonna do it we're gonna do annihilation yeah all right so the movie stars and james remars (laughs) (laughs) a giant hand comes out of the ground to hold up johnny cage's dead body (laughs) so fucking dumb okay let's say you watch and you need something else to go with. You need Ooh. a good, you know, like if you're having a good steak, you want a good wine to pair with it. <laughs> so what's a movie that people can watch in addition to watching 1995's? I'll say this. It's not my pick, but if Hauser were here, I would say Jet Li's The One would pair very well with this movie. 
I don't want to steal from you guys, but I wrote down two other ones that I'll talk about after you give yours that I think would be a good pairing. But mm-hmm. ultimately, I'm going to go with another great movie that's got some great action scenes, some great bits of comedy. And I'm going to go with maybe the funniest movie I've ever seen in my life, but Kung Pao Enter the Fist. Yes. So good. Great choice. I need to run that movie back soon. I got to rewatch it. Amazing. <laughs> JT, what are you watching after? <laughs> So if you're in the mood for video game movies, sure. mm-hmm. go with Street Fighter. Yeah. I don't think it's as good. Nope. I don't think it's as <laughs> iconic. Uh-huh. It's campy and it's fun. Okay. That movie has some incredible jokes in it, though. It yeah. has Raul Julia giving an, an amazing performance that the movie does not deserve. I know. But also, there's that great bit where they're watching the security cameras and, like, Guile is, like, heading straight for the bad guy's lair and... Zangief says, quick, change the channel. <laughs> One of the funniest <laughs> jokes I've seen in any movie. <laughs> he absolutely is amazing in that movie. He's I love him so much. He's great. Giving a great performance knowing that he won't be around much longer, too, yeah. unfortunately, when that movie is being made. So sad. Yeah. But as a second choice, piggybacking off the Kung Pao would be Kung Fu Hustle. Oh, yeah. great movie. Yeah. Nathan, what are you putting on? So I know you said uh, like a nice wine to pair with steak, and mine's more <laughs> like if you followed steak with eating beef jerky. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Which I often do, by the way. Oh, good. <laughs> I went with another martial arts video game adaptation produced by Paul W.S. Anderson, mm-hmm. 2006's DOA Dead or Alive. Wow. One of the dumbest films <laughs> I've ever seen. I've never seen that movie. Eric Roberts plays the villain, oh, and my he God. uses sunglasses that teach him all martial arts. Arts. Okay, I know what I'm putting on tonight. Thank you for the recommendation. <laughs> Score by Junkie XL. Oh, by the way. fuck. Dustin, do you know what DOA is? I know what it is, but okay. that's why I never watched the movie. I was like, there's no fucking way they can make a movie out of that. But now <laughs> my curiosity has been peaked. I mean, look, it stars Jamie Presley, if that gives you an idea of how fun this movie is. Oh, my God. Look, 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 listen, you had my interest, but now you got my curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking in. And also, uh, we talked about them earlier. These are the other two I was going to recommend. Mm-hmm. Big Trouble in Little China yes. would be a great pairing with this. Mm-hmm. You got more hand to hand fighting, some more Asian mysticism, and <laughs> Jack Burton is giving big Johnny Cage energy. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, Johnny Cage has like a whole line about how like there's a guy shooting ice yep. and another guy that's on fire and someone made of electricity. It's essentially Jack Burton being like, you know, this low pan character yep. waits for me to drive my truck straight through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My favorite movie of all time. And uh, the other best 90s New Line Cinema movie, you got to go with TMNT 2, Secret of the Use. Yes. yes. Great choice. Oh, I forgot to mention, have I ever told you that I interviewed the screenwriter of Big Trouble in Little China? No. <laughs> WD Richter, we had him on the AIPT Comics podcast a year or two ago. And he was befuddled when I told him that Big Trouble in Little China is my favorite movie. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was a really nice guy, but he was just sort of like, I literally said, like, my favorite film of all time, Big Trouble in Little China. And he goes, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's a compliment if I've ever heard one. It's one of my favorite moments on the show. Oh, all right. Well, one last bit of uh, business here, fellas. Do you recommend 1995's? <laughs> Yes. Fuck. Yes. Yeah. I do recommend 1995's <laughs> to anyone. I will say this. It doesn't hold up at all. No. no. But there is some genuinely cool stuff in here. I've talked about it already, but the soundtrack is fucking banging. The production design is actually pretty good at times. Mm-hmm. Some of the performances are just so much fun to watch that it makes it, you know, well worth it. And there is still so much charm in 90s New Line Cinema movies. Uh-huh. Like, this is just my childhood and all the movies we talked about. Plus, this movie is very short. Yeah. Way shorter than our episode is going to be. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. I think you nailed it last night. You texted Mally and I. Happy to report. Still rips. Yeah. Not a good movie, but still great. Yeah. Again, and I don't care that we have our nostalgia glasses on mm-hmm. and just looking at it through that. Mm-hmm. I think that's the issue, but we can overlook all of that because of that reason. Mm-hmm. It is comfort food, man. It is. This is just cotton candy. It's like, oh, this is going to be great. And then it dissolves quickly in your mouth, but you're still <laughs> yeah. glad you went on the ride with it. You know, that's perfect. <laughs> it's McDonald's chicken nuggets. It might make you feel bad. but like <laughs> It might make you do that groan that Goro does when he gets punched in the ball. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> (laughs) That's uh, that's it. That's 1995's. 
If you want more of our show, you can always subscribe because we have new episodes drop every Monday while we're in season. We've still got a couple more to come. And you can also check out our back catalog where we have 170 plus episodes to listen to. Mm-hmm. Fucking, this is wild that we've been doing it this long. Why? If you haven't already, <laughs> rate, subscribe, leave feedback wherever you're listening to us right now. You can also follow us on social media at Twitter and Instagram and TikTok as well as over on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. Mm-hmm. You can email us at the silver linings playlist at gmail.com. Tell us uh, your favorite part about this movie. Uh, if you got some feedback about the show, you can also do it there. And yeah, I think that's it. Nathan. Yeah. Next week, your pick. Right. And I'll go ahead and give a little clue myself. We have mentioned the movie we're talking about next week in this episode. That's right. But uh, you're going to give us a full blown clue for what we're talking about. So here we go. I have less of a clue and more of a question. I just want to know of our listeners. Do you read Sutter Kane? <laughs> I knew that was going to be it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait to talk about next week's movie. Me it's going to be our man. Valentine's Day episode. Can you believe it? Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's for all the loving couples out there, too. Absolutely. Unlockable character, JT Kelly. Thank you for joining us at the last minute for this movie. Thank you for having me on something other than a Halloween movie. And you know what? It's a little spoiler, a little, you know, a little peek into the future. You're going to be joining us for a non-Halloween movie, too, this season. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited for that episode. Cannot wait. So I guess we can say uh, recipes oatmeal Mm -hmm. and art lean. Oh man, rest in power, art lean. Rest Mm. in power. And uh, as always, give me one second. (laughs) Hold on. (laughs) I know what he's going to do. Hold on. (laughs) (laughs) That was great. Yeah. Thank you for that. (laughs) He's so proud of that. That's it. Excelsior! 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 Look it up! Hello YouTube! If you've made it this far, thanks! Could you do us one more favor? Could you hit those like and subscribe buttons? Maybe leave us a comment on what you think of the show. We'd really appreciate it. Join us again next week for an all new episode. Bye!